Hello and welcome to another episode of The Grind Bin. I'm Mike Wood. I'm Chris Hughes. Today we're going to be talking about 1983's Joysticks. Totally awesome video games. Hey Bobby, I got the money. Yeah, I made the team. But you're a hooker. Get that goddamn thing out of your mouth. Spooky got, 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 no, got no real coach. Brenda. Ah, so that's right. You heard Hughes's voice again. We couldn't get rid of him. He's back for one more episode until Chris gets back from his uh, European tour. The real Chris. The real Chris. Chris Mann. Hughes, thanks for coming back. Oh, you're welcome. It's been uh, it's been fun. I only got a few complaints about the Dolomite episode, but uh, in the most part, everybody loved it. Yeah, it wasn't my fault. We didn't get any complaints. No. So. <laughs> but uh, everybody was. Uh, Really enjoyed hearing your childhood uh, movie stories. So, I wish I could remember more, but you know, I was a child. Oh, I forgot to ask: Did you ever have like a picture of you in a jean jacket with your arms crossed and a backwards hat as your um, photo? Because that's what every child actor had in the nineties. Yeah, absolutely. I do have one. Somewhere. Did you really? Oh, absolutely. Oh, I got please? that one. I got. I think I have one with like milkshakes. I have one with uh, milkshakes. Like yeah, you like sitting I at was a table at with a milkshake. table with milkshakes. Um, God, I swear a full cowboy getup is one of them. Wow! Can you please provide these so I can I post can them on them, our Twitter? But I can give you one that uh, I know where it is. Is uh, me in like a Bruce Lee collarless shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I really want looking that. studly. All right. Well, that will be your um, profile picture on the website. <laughs> All so. right. Sounds good. So, I gave you a choice of a couple movies just by trailers alone, and you picked Joysticks. Uh, It was the best. Chris Mann is so jealous that he's not a part of this episode. I talked to him today all the way from, uh, I don't know where the hell he was, Deutschland or something? But uh, it was 3 a.m. He was getting back from another night on tour, called up, said he listened to the Dolomite episode, he liked it, and uh, he was really, really bummed that we were doing joysticks without him. I'm surprised he's heard of it. I have never heard of this movie. This movie is, I would say, rather popular, which I don't understand, but almost universally hated among people who play video games or like 80s movies. And I don't understand why after watching it again. <laughs> I I mean, you know, not to spoil anything, I love this movie. It was entertaining from start to finish. It was an enjoyable watch of a bad movie. But the thing about this movie is there's no time to hate it. No, it's, no, We'll no. get into how fast-paced this is, but it literally does not stop. From start to finish, it is pure delight. <laughs> it reminds me a lot of uh, Beach Girls, actually. Okay. I, don't, I didn't watch Beach Girls, so I, I only oh, listened to it. Oh, you haven't seen it. Beach Girls? Oh. I only listened to it through the podcast. Beach Girls is like just a slower version of uh, Joysticks. Oh, okay. That's good. So you want to get into the uh, cast and crew? Yeah, give me some info on this, because I, okay. I only recognize one actor. I have quite a bit of uh, information about this movie, and there are quite a few heavy hitters in this movie, believe it or not. And some people, I'm so glad if you didn't notice who's in this movie. There's two actors from other movies that you definitely have seen that I probably think when I drop this on you, you're going to just, the eyes are going to be wide, and you're just going to be surprised. So let's start out with the crew, though. Graydon Clark, director and producer of this movie, started started his career as an actor in Drive-In Fair, actually. 1969, The Mighty Gorga. 1969, Satan's Sadist, which he also wrote. 1970, Hell's Bloody Devils. 1971, Dracula vs. Frankenstein. Then in 1973, he started directing. His first movie was Tom. 1976, Black Shampoo. 1977, Satan's Cheerleaders. 1983, Joysticks. 1985, Final Justice with Joe Don Baker, who's also in this movie. 1988, Uninvited. He kept directing through the 90s, and his last credit was 1998, Star Games. From what I know, he's still around. Did you see Star Games? No. You've seen it? No. Absolutely never heard of it. I was just... It sounds <laughs> oh, I'm just like, naming off some credits. I mean, no, but I mean, 1998, that'd be, we were like, what, 14? Maybe a freshman in high school. Yeah, and... 
we should have seen this game, this movie called Star, Star Games. Games. No, I never heard of it. Because I'm sure we saw Reindeer Games, probably the same year. Oh, God. <laughs> One of your favorites. Yeah. So, I don't know if you noticed this. Three writers for this movie. Which, yeah. <laughs> it seems like it, actually. It seems like everybody got their chance to write a joke for every fucking scene. Not only that, they got to write their own story. <laughs> <laughs> First writer, Al Gomez. Only writing credit. Produces a lot of short films and some B-movies. Mikey Epps, only writing credit. Was in the movie as a city councilman, though. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) He acted in a few things, but no major roles. Curtis Birch, a few writing credits. Only three. He was also the associate producer on this film. 1980, he wrote a movie called The Return. 1982, Joysticks. And 1992, Ladybugs. No. With Rodney Dangerfield. And Mr. Brandis. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace. Uh, I once uh, went as Jonathan Brandis for Halloween once when we were 18 years old, still trying to trick or treat. Well, there's a really rich neighborhood around here. Well, Full somebody else bars. went as a girl from Showgirls, and I just borrowed the wig at one point. And some girl asked me uh, who I was, and I said Jonathan Brandis. And she was like, oh, didn't he die? And he was like, yeah, he hung himself. I, sh- I should have put a uh, rope burn around my neck. And she did not think that was funny. No, no, no. That was not. That didn't, It didn't go over well. I think we ended the night right after that. <laughs> that was a bust, by the way. We did go to the rich neighborhood, and they didn't give out any bigger no, candy. There's no bigger candy. No. You know, now I just go and buy it myself. <laughs> just clean it out after Halloween. Yeah. Good. November Get 1st, best day for candy. So now we'll get in the cast. So we'll start with the big heavy hitter, Joe Don Baker, who plays Joseph Rudder in this movie. 82 credits and too many major movies to name but he started his career really like took off because he was in the original 1973 walking tall right which may be a good movie for this podcast actually because it's a nice uh like grindhousey action exploitation movie uh which is based on a true story they remade it recently i believe with the rock right well recently like 16 years ago really it's that long i, I swear it's yeah. probably that long 16 years ago it's probably 2000 then he was in uh, 1985, Fletch, as the police chief. 1987, The Living Daylights. 1991, Cape Fear, as the um, private detective. I really enjoyed that film. The oh, re- I even though it was a remake. the remake of Cape Fear. Yeah. Well, Scorsese and De Niro, just incredible. But Joan on Baker in that was the private detective who uh, I remember his character infamously drank Pepto-Bismol with his whiskey, which I thought was a great drink. <laughs> Uh, 1994, Reality Bites. 1995, he played the bad guy in Congo, which was one of his highlights. Wait, what was Reality Bites? Was that the... That uh, one with uh, Ben Stiller, I believe, right? Oh, okay. 1995, he was in GoldenEye, and he'll reprise his role in a um, James Bond movie with Pierce Brosnan. But 1996, Mars Attacks, he played the dad of Jack Black. Uh, (laughs) Remember in the trailer? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 1997, Tomorrow Never Dies. 2001, he was in Joe Dirt as Brandy's dad. He went uncredited in that movie for some reason. No. Yeah. I wonder if he made it to the second Joe Dirt. <laughs> oh, God, for his sake, I hope not. He's probably uncredited again. 2005, Dukes of Hazard. He was in that movie. 2008, Strange Wilderness. And his last credit, so he didn't make it to Joe Dirt 2, was 2012. He was in the movie Mud. And he hasn't done anything since. That was an Oscar-nominated movie, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Well, Jonah Baker's a real actor. Why he did this movie, I have no fucking clue. He was in real movies <laughs> before this. But the director had worked with him before and after. So I think it had something to do with him being like, hey, could you do me a favor and be in this one? He was probably like, how much does it pay? I think he actually just had more fun with it. It, he is the highlight of this movie. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it was just so weird. He was just having fun the whole time. He did look like he was having a good time. Everybody in this movie looks like they're in on the joke. There's fourth wall breaking, but then there's this movie where everybody knows that it's going to be this way and it's supposed to be received as this and they don't act to it. You're right. Everybody looked like they look like they're having a blast making this movie. Like they just rented out some warehouse, filled it up with these arcade machines, and just went wild. Okay, so next person, Leaf Green, who plays Eugene. Only eight acting credits. He was in something before this, 1982. He was in Greece too. Uh, 1983, Joysticks, and then just TV. But he went on to become a production manager. Uh, 2001, Osmosis Jones. 2003, Looney Tunes Back in Action. And 2006, Brother Bear 2. 
Didn't know they made a sequel to that. Disney? Yeah. Disney. Jim Greenleaf, who plays Dorfus. Nothing too big, but a couple acting credits. Stopped acting in 1986, though. 1981, Evil Speak. 1982, Night Shift. 1983, Joysticks. And 1984, Toy Soldiers. Okay. Night Shift, who was he? I didn't write down the character name. Because isn't Night Shift the one with uh, Henry Winkler? And he play, and he's the... Uh, they have parties there in this like cadaver morgue? Isn't I think it Night is. Shift? I, think, I think that's it. Yeah. I think he was the other main character in it. <laughs> so he had a big role in that movie. Then. Uh, we'd have to look it up. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. So Scott McGinnis, who plays Jeffrey Bailey, 27 acting credits, done a little bit more. 1983 Joysticks, then went on 1984 to be in Star Trek Three. <laughs> you have something to say about this, huh? What is that? The search for Spock? Is it? Oh, God, God damn you with all these questions. <laughs> I don't have this much written down. Uh, 1986, he's in a movie called Odd Jobs with Paul Reiser. And stopped acting in 1993 and went on to direct. Few credits, 1994, Caroline at Midnight. 1995, Last Grasp. In 1997, he directed 18 episodes of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids the tv show and star trek 3 is the search for spock so good call chris he's still directing stuff today so here we get into another one of the heavy hitters by the way john grise 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 g-r-i-e-s grise. how do you think that's pronounced grise who plays king vidiot okay you mean matthew lillard's dad <laughs> <laughs> he is in some stuff you've heard of and you will probably be surprised to learn he is someone from one of these movies he has 137 acting credits. No way. 1995, Get Shorty. 1997, I was in you were in Get Shorty. I was in Get Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know him. Who was he in Get Shorty? I don't know. Shit. That was they, another movie I died in. You died in Get Shorty? Yeah, I'll break it down. The, what happened? So that was the one where I think actually my mom and I were both in this one, and we got sent onto the plane that the the guy was supposed to die on so like we had to do the whole scene and he's getting all nervous in there and then he stands up and walks out that we were on that plane uh, like i asked you in deep impact and i'll ask you again was there a shot of your charred child body at all no but didn't they do the remains of the plane at the end <laughs> or the, like your shirt flew down oh god your, i wish your singed shirt if i was still acting today i would do like a csi or something where they get to like show my naked body and then put the <laughs> put the big bright light in the in the private area so they don't have to do it but then you can just be this cadaver you can be, you'll live forever you know how many csis there are that's true you probably get that sweet sweet um residual is yeah, residual guy. money 1997 he was in men in black he was in every episode of the show the pretender as the character brutes 2003 he was in the movie the rundown 2004 he was in Napoleon Dynamite as Uncle Rico. No. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice it until I looked it up and I was like, holy shit. That's him. He went. He That's weird. Yeah. Because he's, he's a Uncle jock Rico. as he's, he's a retired jock when he's old in Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> and he's a punk a, crazy a, guy. In old this punk new wave video <laughs> game player. In this one. Can you see the resemblance now? I know. I'm going to watch it again. <laughs> and he's also 2008, 2012, and 2014. He's in every Taken movie as the character Casey. <laughs> <laughs> he is still working in tons of things. Like I said, 137 credits. Oh, my God. King Vidiot is probably the most successful actor in this entire movie, which is insane. Corrine, Corrine, okay, pronounce it, see if you can pronounce this one. Corrine, B-O-H-R-E-R, Borer? Burr? Burr, who plays Patsy. Oh, God, the one with the worst <laughs> voice ever. She's probably known to our audience from her brief appearance in Beach Girls as a party goer trying to open a champagne bottle. She has 62 acting credits. 1982, Beach Girls, her character's name, Champagne Girl. 1982, she was in Zapped with Scott Baio. 1983, Joysticks. 1982, a different TV show called ER. This one's just E forward slash R. Never okay. heard of it. She was in 22 episodes. Every episode of the one year that show was on. 1986, Stewardess School. Great movie. 1987, Police Academy Citizens on Patrol. Who was she in Citizens <laughs> on Patrol? Did David Spade make out with her? 
Uh, for her case, I hope not. Uh, went on to lots of TV and movies. Um, 1994, she was in the TV movie, Revenge of the Nerds 4. 1995, she was in an episode of Mr. Show, but only credited as extra at a party. Oh, my. <laughs> now we have to... At least that's... That's good. That's good stuff. Mr. Show is such a good show. Oh, I love Mr. Show. 1997, Star Kid. She's still working. Last credit was in 2012, Murder in the First, a TV show where she plays Lydia Maker. Never heard of it. John Deal, the cousin who appears, uh, who always wears the angel hat. (laughs) Okay. Large amount of acting credits. Very big movies. Actually has more credits than King Vidiot. 144 credits. 1981, Escape from New York. 1983, Vacation. 1983, DC Cab. 1984, 57 episodes of Miami Vice as Detective Larry Zito. Oh, my. 1991, Kickboxer 2. 1992, Mikey, a great killer kid movie, by the way. If you haven't seen that one, I recommend it. Own it on VHS. 1993, he was in Falling Down. I just watched that recently. Another girl from Falling Down. Oh, really? The the one that played his daughter. Oh, nice. <laughs> you met her on set? Uh, no, I actually <laughs> met her from my friends in the Valley. But uh, yeah, she that was her one thing that she did, and we always made fun of her for it. <laughs> did you always say, like, is your dad coming over? Well, no, uh, like her stepdad ended up being Jason Carter when we were in high school, who is like a main character on Babylon 5. Oh, wow. <laughs> 1983. So he was in Falling Down. He just played, uh, when Michael Douglas breaks into this rich house, he plays the guy that's in the backyard. Oh, the one that was like, oh, I'm just here. Yeah, yeah, that was him. But in 1994, he was in Stargate as Lieutenant Kowalski. No. Yeah. And I, I, when I saw it, I was like, I fucking know this guy from somewhere. I recognize that face. And when I saw the credit for Stargate, I'm like, fucking Kowalski. And you know who Kowalski was in that movie. He's the guy who's like being a dick the whole time, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 1995, he was in the movie Nixon as Gordon Liddy, believe it or not. 1996, A Time to Kill. 1996, Foxfire. 1997, Con Air. He has kept working consistently and is about four movies that are in post-production right now. How can you say Con Air and not tell me what character? Uh, I think it was like a cop or a jail person. Damn it. I don't think he was one of the cons. So trivia for you. Before we get started, I got a few little facts for you. Budget. I want to hear your guess. Okay, give me a little bit of a hint. Is it more or less than Dolomite? More. Okay, then I'll do 250000 300000 You were so close. If this was Prices Right, you probably would have won. Box office. Oh, $1.1 million. $3.95 million. It came in fifth on its opening weekend, actually. So you have found you tracked down a, a Blu-ray copy of this movie, but I did not have time to listen to the commentary. But the, I do have some notes from the commentary. Oh, good. Because there is a director commentary on that. Which, by the way, if you're going to get joysticks, track down that Blu-ray. The quality of this movie is excellent. It's It's enjoyable it's remastered it looks like it looks perfect like a lighting. new movie yeah <laughs> it looks really good uh, i can't even believe that somebody had kept the originals <laughs> to make it such a pristine copy but highly recommend it it's pretty expensive but if you're a fan of this movie it's definitely worth getting so the director graden clark has stated that he developed the idea for this film after seeing teenagers waiting in a line to enter an arcade he decided that an arcade-themed film could tap into that market. He was right and wrong, because anybody I know that was like is like big into video games freaking hates this movie for some reason. Well, I mean, we have another movie that made around the same time, Tron, that's a thousand times better to the audience. Well, or worse. I love the original Tron. The original Tron's a cool-looking movie, but it's freaking boring in a lot of parts. Yeah. It really is. It drags. It certainly. This movie certainly has it keeps your attention a little bit longer. Th- this movie does not drag. There's no. <laughs> there's no break on this movie. When the director approached game company Midway about using the image of Pac-Man in the film, he also requested that they allow him to feature a yet-to-be-released game in order to increase the film's appeal. The game which Midway chose to feature was Satan's Hollow. That's a real game, which 
is played in the face-off between King Vidiot and Dorfus. This movie was shot in three weeks. Does that surprise you? Yeah. <laughs> the opening scene with Eugene was shot without permits and in less than an hour. And we'll get into that opening scene, and that's absolutely insane, especially with no permits. <laughs> the house used as Joseph Rudder's home in the movie belonged to Nat King Cole. No. And he loaned awesome. it out for the movie. That's all I got. I really should listen to that trivia at some point and maybe come back to this movie because, oh, God damn, do I love this movie. This was so highly entertaining. There's so much to this movie. <laughs> and I can't wait to get into it. But, Chris, before we do, let's take a listen to the trailer. Joysticks. If everyone would, like, just bag the noise, okay, like we could do this? Everyone's doing it. But it's not vulgar. <laughs> Kids play with their joysticks day in and day out, jerking back and forth. Everyone's doing it, but it's not violent. <laughs> like, where are we supposed to go? And everyone's doing it. A good clean song. Arcane! You want to play Pac-Man? Eugene and Mommy? Oh, oh, it's been so long. Joysticks. <laughs> You and I have something in common. We both like to hang out in public bathrooms. No. Prepare yourself. I would like you to meet Simba. A film for people who are totally into fun. Strip video. You got it. Games. Oh, damn it! And good times. You're running a garbage dump in here, and I intend to do something about it. You will not go to the arcade again, right? If I want to go to the arcade, like, I am going to go. <laughs> Just for the fun of it. If you win, I'll close the arcade down. It's more fun than games. Joysticks. I can't go on like this! Totally awesome video game! That trailer is great. It shows you a lot of the highlights of the movie. But it doesn't show you any it doesn't show you the whole movie. It's a it's an actual trailer. It's a teaser. <laughs> yeah, because there are some of the movies we cover where they literally show you the whole movie. I would say infamously, if you watch the trailer for Savage Streets, you have just seen the whole fucking movie, including the end. <laughs> it literally shows you exactly what happens. The whole and movie. Dolomites was the first five minutes of the movie. And they just yeah, like, that's the trailer. <laughs> They're like, this is the best part. Let's just put it in the trailer. Cut in all the one-liners. shot of video games and we get this awesome theme song playing beneath us right now chris totally awesome video games we get a preppy looking girl playing video games which i thought was odd it's just like her by herself playing this game and there's like a lot of like creepy shots of uh just voyeuristic shots of her How, okay that's preppy to you like 80s workout garb and the smallest shorts you've ever seen I guess. I mean, that's uh, like she just like like instead of playing video games, she should be at the gym. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like she should be out running at the track or something. I, I like how everybody's she's dancing to the theme song while playing video games yeah. as if it's playing to her by herself in like an arcade. It was really <laughs> odd, and I thought this was funny is that when the director of photography credit comes up, it's on a shot of her butt. So it's just. <laughs> It's like, do you think he requested that that would put I, up he there? He put it right there for a reason. <laughs> and that's when I wrote in my notes, three people wrote this. <laughs> Cut to Eugene driving in a car. He's dressed very, very stereotypically as a nerd in this movie. And you remember this? When he's driving down the street, what he's singing? 
No, I don't remember what he was okay, singing. Okay, so Eugene's sitting in the car, and he has no radio on or anything, but he's singing Camp Town Races. Okay. Oh, the do da day. Oh, the do da day. Up both ways. Camp Town Race track five miles long. So he's just driving down the street. He's like, Camp Town Races, do that song. Do da, do da. And he's got his window down. All of a sudden, some girls pull up next to him in their convertible, and they lean in toward his window. And the brunette says, Maybe you'd like to pull over and sing us a song? You think I have a good voice? Mm -hmm. And they coax him over by saying they'll make good music together. And I wrote at this point, what the hell is going on? Two girls were seducing a guy. This is a nerd. I thought this might have been like a nerd fantasy, like take Revenge of the Nerds and take out all of the other stuff. This is how this movie started to me. Was it was just he was going to be a cool nerd that okay? Girls yeah, are into. I thought we were going to get like some sort of Jacob Ladder scenario where yeah. he wakes up and he's like on his deathbed or something, uh. <laughs> or it was going to be like some sort of prank or something because it just seemed odd that and they're like they're really into him. Oh, I mean, really super. into him. Uh, and when I say he's very very stereotypically dressed like a nerd, I mean like if you were to look up nerd uh, in the dictionary, this would be the picture of it. You know, like it's just like a guy out of uh, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah, Poindexter. He's got like a sweater vest on. He's got uh, the corduroy pants, like big glasses. His hair is all messed up. But didn't you like? Okay, so they they're trying to seduce him. He eventually gets into that car. But the way that they're portraying this character is. He is still, he's not a, a nerd that's shy and never talked to girls before. He's like super confident and all about it. Yeah, he's just like, if you're going to talk to me, I'll talk to you. Yeah, he's like, oh, you know, ladies, I'd love to, but I got to get to my job at the arcade. He's like, he's not into it. No, he he's like, yeah, them. you know what? I really got to go to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's what he says. It's my first day at the arcade. And then they light up and they go, you work at the arcade? Jeff Bailey's? And it's just like everybody in this town. Loves that damn arcade. I like fun just as much as the next guy, but um, it's my first day at the arcade. You work at the video arcade? Jeff Bailey's? Yes, I'm helping Mr. Ba- uh, Jeff out. Why don't you come on over? So they keep trying to coax him over, but he really's got to go. So how do they do it, Chris? They pull out the goods. So that cut to them pulling up their t-shirts was in front of his his. Door. Yeah, he's like, I gotta go, and then they just pull down their shirts, and he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. like with the big old, uh, <laughs> the big old bug eyes. Oh, oh, no oh my! <laughs> and I, I looked at the clock, and I said, three minutes and thirty seconds in this movie, and we already got boobs. Yep. So he's shocked about this, and they finally, they, they get him over with this move. It works, right? The blonde girl looks at her friend and says, "Look at him. Do we really have to go through this?" Within earshot of him. So he's right there because he just starts. Okay, so he starts climbing through his window to get there instead of opening the door because Eugene's such a klutz. <laughs> he's like putting his knee on the uh, the horn and it's honking and everything. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so he gets over and the brunette says, Do you want to get in sorority or not? Besides, we don't really have to ball him. We just got to get his pants down. And I wrote, what the hell is going on? I... Don't know, but I like that they use ball. It was something from one of your earlier podcasts that yeah. you guys were obsessed with. I'm like, oh, it still exists at this time period. So there's going to be a movie that you cover where it <laughs> stops being cool. Yeah, at some point they stop using the term ball, but I'm going to bring it back. It's more elegant than saying fuck. Well, yeah, and I want to hear if it's like connected to like I'm having a ball. <laughs> <laughs> when you're excited about something. Like, that seems like a real British term. Yeah. Like, uh, well, or like a piss doing? up. Oh, won't you come over, have a ball? <laughs> oh, I know who to ask. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I have a question for you, though. She says that thing about the sorority. Will we ever hear about them being in a sorority again? No. <laughs> Everybody else is like, I, I, oh, no, they're not in high school. They've all, like, graduated high school. But I was thinking, like, because there's a part later where they talk about how all some of the girls are there are underage. And I'm like, do you think they added this line to be like, oh, no, no, no. But the girls are getting naked all the time. They're not underage. So no worries. Or maybe they're they're trying to assume that it's only kids that are going to arcades. And then like, no, no, no. Adults come here, too. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. It was weird. The sorority line made no sense because they're never in school. They're, these girls really don't do anything except go to the arcade and take their tops off. I and mean, that's it. This prank doesn't do anything. Well, okay, so we'll get to the break. So he get, Eugene gets in the car finally after uh, 
climbing through the window to get there like it's the fucking General Lee or something. Hey, there's something. four boobs in front of his face. <laughs> he can't take it, right? So he gets out, he gets in their car, and they go, well, which one of us do you want first? And he does that thing where he closes his eyes, plays Eeny, Meeny, Mighty Mo while touching the boobs. Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Mo. For which one shall I go? He picks the brunette. The blonde wants to watch. He apologized to the blonde. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. You, I'm sorry. <laughs> Luck of the draw. Oh, I can take it, but I want to watch. So she says she wants to watch, and he says something like, oh, really? Is that interesting for you? Or is that, he just... I'd say at this movie, nobody ever stops talking. Nobody stops talking, but then, then nobody is inhibited by anything. Like, he's like, oh, you want to watch? Okay. <laughs> Like I got, I don't right. have. There's not many people that ever say no, no. in this movie. <laughs> They're like, oh, let's do this. Okay. Except for Jeff, he says no all the time. He's the only character that ever says no to anything. He really. has special powers <laughs> through the whole movie. I can't wait to get into this. Uh, so Eugene's all excited. He pulls out that banaka, squirts himself right in the eye. Gotta love that gag. And then they say, "Well, we want to see your manhood." He stands up and he says, "Ladies." Prepare yourself. I would like you to meet Simba. Do you think Disney took this guy's dick's name for The Lion King? Is <laughs> it bad that's all I was thinking about, too? I'm like, man, does he mean it's like a little baby cub that he can't wait to be king? Or is this old Simba? <laughs> is like Simba a name that was associated? Is The Lion King like not an original story or something? Possibly. I don't know. Is Simba like related to something else, or I have no idea. What's the uh, what's the elephant that cartoon elephant that everybody Babar? <laughs> that was actually like it turned out to be some like known term that everybody just used it for that, and then this, Babar. What the hell? That was shitty that? HBO cartoon. Yeah, the shitty HBO cartoon with for kids. Yeah, that name actually existed before the show ever did, and it was huh. So Simba could be this long. I really, standing really name. hope that Simba, the name for the Lion King, was taken by uh, Eugene's dick in um, joysticks. I think that would be great. <laughs> That's what I choose to believe. Uh, if you have the uh, background for Simba, go ahead and uh, tweet it at us and use the hashtag Eugene's dick. Uh, he pulls down his pants in public at this point. He's in the middle of the street, which what I said the first movie, the first scene in this movie was shot without a permit. This is fucking crazy because not only have we had girls pull out their boobs in the middle of public, but now we have a man standing up in the back seat of a convertible, taking down his pants. He's got his boxers out. The blonde takes out a Polaroid camera and takes a picture, and then a cop pulls up and drives by and sees this whole scene going down. <laughs> now, when you saw that Polaroid camera camera, did you're like she was hiding this this big giant brick yeah. of a camera that yeah. was supposed to be, oh it's a surprise yeah you're <laughs> right it's really big actually that scene just ends the like, co- well the cop coming around the corner staring at him with these glasses on nice perfect mustache if you saw it <laughs> nice uh 80s cop mustache oh 80s cop mustache and th- does anything else happen no the no. cop just drives off right yeah. Like, I think I th- they say something like, oh, we'll see you at the arcade and drive off. Well, no. Okay, this is what happens. They He, he like, quickly, like, hops out when the cop comes oh, by, yeah. and they take his pants. Yeah. And that's how that ends. But we'll see his pants again, believe it or not. Arcade. Eugene sneaks into the arcade without his pants on, which I thought was weird. So there's people everywhere, right? And we watch Eugene, like, slowly creeping across the parking lot. I'm like, well, if anything, you should be running. Because you're in public and you're not hiding behind anything. So the longer you take, the more people are going to be suspicious of you. And he's like, you know, like ducking behind a wall. And when he gets in there to the arcade, he's like sneaking around the arcade while people are still playing games. Yeah, but he's like pressed against one of the boxes. Yeah, but everybody's (laughs) looking at him. (laughs) He's not hiding himself from anybody. Uh, So we finally meet the one and only Jeff Bailey. Owner of the arcade. Well, I guess part owner of the arcade. No, he's the manager. Yeah. He Um, knows the owner very well. He's related. Where all the most popular people in town come to play the games. 
This arcade, by the way, is amazingly decorated with stars and lights and it's very bright brightest arcade i've ever seen in my life and it looks more like a roller rink than it does an arcade i guess i think that'd be fair there it's a multi-tiered hundreds of boxes of arcade games everywhere and i never saw and like I did, okay now because eugene we'll see where he works but is this a full bar in this arcade or is it like a soda fountain type thing I think it could be either if there's a private party. (laughs) Okay. All of a sudden, we see with Jeff, the two girls from the first scene. They're at the arcade. They know Jeff very well. Then we get the introduction of Patsy, (laughs) Chris's favorite character in the movie. We're going to play a sample of her voice right now, and boy, the way she delivers her lines, cloying. Jumpy, come over here and play Galactic with me. I just thought it'd be like way totally bitching if you would like play with me. Like, Jeff promised to play me. Oh, God, Connie. Space conduct that you are. Jeffy never promised you anything, did you, Jeff? The worst part of the movie. <laughs> if this is the worst part of the movie, this movie is really good to watch. <laughs> that voice drives me up a wall. It's like the most stereotypical Valley Girl It's worse than a Valley impression. Girl. I don't know what to call that. <laughs> Do your impression of it. I want to hear it. Oh, I can't. I, there's nowhere near... <laughs> I grew up in the valley. I heard the likes and the, you know, Clueless was bad. Yeah. This is a thousand times worse than Clueless. <laughs> it's so bad. And she asked Jeff if he wants to play Galaxian with her or something. Did you find it funny that she, he, he goes, oh, okay, I don't play games. He's like, it, pretty much everybody here knows that. You've been here before, Patsy. Like, they all but know they her. All, they keep asking him. No matter yeah, what, they no matter keep what, asking you know, I'm him. Keep, no, leave me alone. You want to drink this beer? No, you know, I don't drink. <laughs> no, you want a beer? Really? Please? <laughs> but he keeps he keeps saying no, no, no. He won't play the games. And he says something about how he's got to keep his uh, relationship with the clientele kosher. However, that's not the case in the next five minutes. So there's a... Okay, this is where I read. There's a bar in this arcade. Because there's all these people sitting at this bar. And from what I can tell, they're drinking. But I guess... Who knows? For some reason, one of the girls pulls out the Eugene's pants for some reason they just randomly make an appearance and they hand them to Jeff and they say like are these your pants and they go no and it has the name written Eugene on the inside (laughs) and I just wrote what the fuck what is going on where did the pants come from okay so this is one of the first of many setups so they're going (laughs) to set it up and then they're going to knock it out every time (laughs) oh god was yeah so he looks at the pants and goes eugene something not mine but he must not be far and then throws them and then eugene this is when he comes into the arcade and he's trying to sneak around and i just wrote people can see you eugene so he'll stand on the side but then he'll walk down an aisle while people are playing and he's like sneaking behind him and everybody's still looking at him while he's sneaking If he would have just walked like he was wearing pants, would anybody have looked up from the That's video game? That's what I'm saying. They, just pretend you got shorts on. I mean, he was wearing boxers. It was. It would have been more appropriate if they had him in like, uh, you know, tidy whitey type underwear. Well, it just doesn't go with the character because this is not even a scene before where he was like proudly displaying himself <laughs> to two girls in the middle of the street, and now he's like too shy to be walking around in his boxers. I don't know. Eugene yeah. is an enigma. He's he's got quite a few different uh, personalities throughout this film. Well, the dynamic that they they interact with him is completely different throughout each scene. Yeah, yeah. Because one scene he's a dork, one scene he's cool, one scene he's like a dear friend. <laughs> <laughs> Eugene c- crashes it. Okay, so that we see something like Eugene sneaking around, and then we cut back to Jeff for a second, and then we hear a loud crash, and Eugene. We cut over, and he's like putting his pants on. And Jeff walks up, right? And he introduces him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm late. And he's like, I don't care. You must be Eugene, my new employee. Call me Jeff. And the girls from the car are like all rubbing on Eugene at this point. And his pants are all wet for some reason. Which no, I we... thought like a drink spilled on it or something. Oh, is that what happened? Because his pants are all wet and they're like wiping his crotch. And then it pans up to Eugene. He's like, Ugh. and he's like struggling to get them on as fast as possible. <laughs> Eugene's like doing his best Hank Hill impression at this point. 
<laughs> and everybody in the whole place just starts laughing. Then he says he's got to go to work. Did you notice this part? Passes by one of the black guys there and says, excuse me, brother. Yeah, oh absolutely. Excuse me, brother. I don't know why it was in there. I don't know why they even had to acknowledge it. Wow. <laughs> So he goes behind the uh, bar and then he says, reporting for duty, it gives like a salute. Like, okay, so what we talked about earlier, this movie is almost impossible to write notes for. It goes at just such a breakneck pace. No, I'm sure we missed a bunch. Like, I have stuff written down here like, what the fuck's with the fake corny lines? Like, he, he's in on the joke when he's delivering them, but then... It make they make fun of him for it too. Yeah, well, there's a part later in the movie where they make fun of Eugene right in front of him, and I didn't even realize he was in the scene. And then he just looks and he goes, "Yeah." <laughs> like, Why? What? <laughs> okay, but after this, so he gives that salute. We cut to Eugene's now walking around the arcade cleaning the cabinets while people are still playing, which seems like a bad idea. And some monk, some guy like dressed like Friar Tuck out of uh, Robin Hood, comes up and like starts yelling at him. I didn't know, I don't know what the hell on. was going on. And then Eugene screams at him and he sprays him with Windex. <laughs> <laughs> then some guy, another guy starts attacking him. And he's doing what I wrote is his best Curly from the Three Stooges impression as he just slaps his head constantly and goes like... Rup, up, 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 up. There's a like, lot. The there's a lot of. On? There's a lot of those like voices that they do, of the of those weird noises or just like singing. an eighty yard yeah. voice or something. I don't get it. And then you're com- completely confused. But it's a setup. This okay. This movie seems to me like somebody is like a complete cokehead directing oh, this yeah. thing and being like, "All right, Eugene, yeah, you gotta walk down this aisle, and then this this guy's gonna come at you, and then this guy's gonna come at you, and you're gonna you're just gonna squirt him, and you're gonna do this. All right, and action." It's, it's like it's like watching the movie Airplane with no dialogue, just cutting to the jokes. The, this movie, <laughs> like I said, written by three people. It's like in each scene, every person got a punchline, so it's just constant jokes to the point where my hands hurt, like trying to write, write notes for this movie. It, oh, it I just gave got up. To, I gave up on parts too much. So after that, Eugene goes up to clean machines while people are playing them. Like there's some guy playing a game and he goes, excuse me, and starts spraying the top of it and wiping it like in the middle of this guy's game. He doesn't have any arcade etiquette because he's a dork and he doesn't play video games. He doesn't know that arcade etiquette yet. You're right. Yeah. (laughs) He's a dork. He doesn't play video games. (laughs) <laughs> Everybody who plays video games in this movie is supposed to be, like, cool. Cool to us, but undertones are they're losers. Everybody that was in the video game thing are losers. Well, according to our soon-to-be-introduced no, even, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Eugene cleans that, and then he sees some fat guy playing a Pac-Man machine. Some homeless man. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> So they look over and there's just shit all over the floor near this Pac-Man machine. Like popcorn and hot dogs and just, it's filthy. And the guy playing this game is, like you said, a homeless man. We'll get into his character because this man, believe it or not, is a main character, but we won't ruin that yet. He is just filthy, this whole movie. Disgusting. I feel like they just said, don't take a bath for the whole shoot. Just show up, roll around in some dirt or something. He looks disgusting. And his hair is like all greasy and just, oh, god damn. No, whatever character they told him to be, he he nailed it. <laughs> he is very good in this movie. So Eugene comes over and he's just like mortified. And he keeps yelling at him. He's like, you need to stop playing. And he's like, I'm going for a high score. I'm going for a high score. And he's going to get it. And then Eugene ruins it. Yep. And then... He pulls out a switchblade <laughs> and points it at Eugene. <laughs> but then he just goes to the back of the machine and opens it. And then he starts looking at some blueprint or something. I was like, what the hell is he doing? Well, he's like, I didn't know it could get up to six digits, the score. So that's what he's supposed to be looking at this paper And he wanted for? to see how it works inside. But all he's doing is pointing his knife at this paper. I can't explain what's going on. I can tell you what they were talking about while he was doing okay. it. So Eugene's getting all mad, and he's like, you can't do this. Hey, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to get the manager. He goes, get him. <laughs> yeah, go get him. So Jeff comes up, and then everybody's introduced. He goes, this is Dorfus. He, I don't know if he works. I don't know if Dorfus works there or just hangs out there. Later in the film, they explain that they're, or no, like, 
probably the next scene they were talking about like oh well you know he we were in high school together and blah, blah, blah. yeah okay so in this scene he says that because he says something Eugene oh, he goes didn't you go to high school here or something he goes yeah and he goes you remember so and so that was the valedictorian yeah the valedictorian of my year and he's like that's him he's like yeah and he, he goes well what happened to him and then Dorfus goes and goes video games kid video games <laughs> video games ruined him <laughs> it's not ever written <laughs> What happened? Games, kid. Video games. So, I mean, this is... So, now we can say this is a main character introduced. Dorfus. And this is a video game movie where these... Supposedly, these video game people are going to be the heroes. And the first one that you meet is a complete and utter, like, sack of shit loser. (laughs) Slob, like slob, hasn't showered in three. He looks. He hasn't like, showered since he graduated high school. If they were to make a live action Peanuts movie, this would be Pigpen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he has flies like spinning around his head the whole movie. It was so weird to watch this movie and focus on him because he is. I think he gets dirtier. Like I he, think as it goes on, yes. And there's a part where somebody has to touch him, and I feel really <laughs> bad. Okay, I guess he does work here because the next thing we cut to is Eugene and Dorfus loading a hot dog machine, like a, a hot dog roller, right? Yeah. Like a Seven Eleven type roller. And I'm like, I don't think it takes two people to load that, but whatever. <laughs> and then Dorfus sneezes on one of them and then puts it in the machine. <laughs> and then a girl's walk girl walks up, Chris, and she says, "Excuse me." And what does Eugene do? Is that where he flings the hot dog in, into her breastuses? Yeah. So Eugene goes, I go hot dog. Oh! <laughs> Apparently now he's afraid of girls. Uh, <laughs> and she goes, excuse me. He goes, Ugh! and then this hot dog flies through the air and lands right in her cleavage and is just protruding out. Into one of the mini games of the video arcade, which is hot dog fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the weirdest part is she just, she just stands there. It doesn't say anything, and people are just laughing and laughing. There's a group of, like, eight men on top of her. <laughs> just staring. staring. laughing. And Eugene is, like, <laughs> terrified. And Dorfus is just like, uh, okay, well, he goes, Dorfus says something like, you got to go get it. And Eugene goes, I'm sorry. It looks like I got my hot dog in your thing. I mean, I got my wiener in your, um, uh, here. Um. Yeah. <laughs> and so he takes the togs out and he's having real trouble. So everybody's laughing and they're like, come on, get it, Eugene, get it. And she's just standing there, not removing it herself, not even moving. She just has this smile on her face like, hey. And everybody's watching as Eugene like takes the top of the tongs of the hot dog and like breaks it off. Tears it apart. Like, now, this would have been a completely different movie if the girl would have just laughed and then her whole neck bent down and pulled the hot dog out. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny if it just ran... Like, maybe they should have had something where she just went, like, it pushed him together and the hot dog flew out or something. That, okay, that would have been... <laughs> <laughs> it was so weird because it just ends with him breaking the hot dog. Well, I mean, yeah, and there's no... Like, the, the good joke is I got my wiener there. Like, you could have done so many other things. Like, oh, it looks like... Hot dog found two buns or something. <laughs> yeah, they, but it just ends in the middle of the scene with one of many Pac-Man wipes. <laughs> How excited were you for a Pac-Man wipe? I I wrote it down. Pac Pac-Man wipe? Question mark. Awesome. <laughs> Like, they use it throughout the whole movie because this movie pretty much only has, like, two locations. And they just use the Pac-Man wipe constantly because we never, like, leave the arcade. We just cut to later, next joke, you know? I love it, though. There's, like, a tasteless part where they use it. (laughs) The (laughs) Pac-Man. Oh, my God. I hope you remember that. This punk-looking guy walks in. And walks Marilyn Manson. (laughs) He does kind of look like Marilyn Manson. It's imagine like uh, Uncle Rico from Napoleon Dynamite with Marilyn Manson makeup on. And he walks in uh, with all these girls that follow him. And they always do this thing when they follow him where they just all pretend they're like Pac-Man ghosts or something. They're his... Well, we find out later like he is... They're like his vidiots, I vidiot guess. Vidiot su- loyal subjects. But you skip the part. What does he say as he walks in? What does he say? Arcade! (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> he just comes in and screams it. <laughs> Arcade! <laughs> this guy, man. And okay, so he walks in, he yells Arcade, and then he sees Dorfus, who's now at this point got like two hot dog baskets in each arm and like a drink in his mouth that he's biting it, like carrying it over. And he starts screaming at him and Dorfus screams back. And at this point, I thought they were like friends or something. I don't know what's going on. I, you don't get the the initial... They don't have any dialogue for initial meetings. It's just, I see you, you see me. <laughs> hey, look, these two people saw each other. Next, next, next thing. Because the next thing he does is he jumps up King Vidiot jumps up, grabs a microphone, <laughs> and then he yells something into it. And all of these girls that are with him just go, rip, 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 and they all start Did doing this, yell? like, march. Start game! <laughs> Didn't he yell, like, Miss Pac-Man? Oh, that's it. Yeah, because they always say that. He's like, Miss Pac-Man. And, and that's... Then they're calling Patsy. Patsy is Miss Pac-Man. Oh, okay. And, and so the, when he sees Patsy, he sends all of his subjects out to go like <laughs> harass her. I don't know. Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, because they do this weird where they go. <laughs> that was so weird. Like that's one of those sounds where they keep on doing like throughout the movie. <laughs> But the way their their dance to describe it is kind of like they they like put their hands in like it's some sort of like dog or something like a rabbit like a T Rex and I they don't just know. go like rip, 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 and just kind of walk in some weird hop. It's, it's so it's, weird. It's really weird. So then Joe Dog Baker shows up, which <laughs> at this point I didn't even know he was in this movie, and I'm like, wait, what the hell? I just like his name. I haven't written. <laughs> Jodon shows up in a limo, dressed in a suit, and he said, okay, <laughs> did we mention, by the way, somehow it's nighttime now? Outside. <laughs> yeah, but I was like, wait, what? we've never been outside this whole time. It's after midnight. Okay, because he goes, it's after midnight. You sure Patsy's in here? And then, okay, that's when the punk guy yells, Miss Pac-Man, and his crew goes over and kidnaps Patsy. Yeah. And then Eugene yells, I'll save you. I'll save you, Patsy, because he had like now we're supposed to think that he has a crush on this girl. Okay, they lead it up like there's going to be this big thing with Eugene and Patsy, even at the end of the movie. Yeah. Never followed up on. <laughs> Those threads are never pulled. Like nothing comes of it. <laughs> but they do keep setting it up. And that part, I can't wait to get to that part at her house. <laughs> Okay. I would, that's usually the slowest part of a movie for me. No. And it's not. <laughs> there is no slow part of this movie. Like, we're, we're describing this. This is still, like, the first 10 minutes of this movie. I, I think I have, like, 30-minute <laughs> increments marked out in this thing. And I don't think we've hit the first 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, God. we got to get going. So, yeah, look. My next page is 30 minutes in. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Eugene says, I'll save you, Patsy. And then he jumps on top of everybody. And they all, like, They'll his version fall. of saving is apparently to do a stage dive on everybody. And they all fall on the ground, and Patsy's, like, really pissed about it. And she yells something. Then Jodon walks in, and he he pulls her up and says, you're coming with me. Then all of a sudden, like, Jeff runs over, and he's trying to apologize to Jodon. Says something about, okay, and then Jodon's like, Mr. Rudder, Jefferson Bailey here. I'm sorry if there's been any problem. You're damn right there's a problem here. Just look what's happening with my daughter here, huh? I want to see the manager. Well, sir, I am the manager. You're not the manager. You're just a punk kid. Uh, my grandfather's the owner, and he's out of town. So in his absence, I have complete power and authority, and I am certain that I can assist you. <laughs> now feed me that bullshit, kid. You're running a garbage dump in here, and I intend to do something about it. Pat me out. And then Dorfus, in the middle of Jodon's thing, like, aims his ass <laughs> okay he's standing to the side but then he like aims his ash cheeks towards Jodon Baker and farts in his direction and apparently it's like a projectile fart Dorfus maneuver <laughs> get up, get up! Get up! <laughs> <laughs> 
This is one of the, the first uh, abilities that, we, <laughs> that he demonstrated that he has. And I'm like, all right, we got Joe Don Baker from Walking Tall to this in a movie. Fart, like, he, fart he, and he tit read, jokes. He read that script and he goes, so you told me in my first scene in this movie, some fat guy's going to fart at me? <laughs> Absolutely. How much does this pay? <laughs> I swear, there, there's no way that he took this for money. I mean, he, scale. This was a scale thing. This is either a friend. And you think he got some front end points on this, baby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Don made half of that three point nine five million. <laughs> I'd love it to see like his highest paid role of all time was joystick. Oh God. So we go from uh, the projectile fart to Patsy's house. Uh, she's sunbathing in the back by the pool uh, and reading a magazine. And Joe Don comes out. He says something about how somebody should close that arcade. Tells her how she can't go there anymore. And then there, this is when I noticed there are like these two teen guys that follow Joe Don Baker everywhere. One of them who's uh, Sergeant Kowalski. <laughs> One from, with an angel's hat. <laughs> yeah, he's the guy with the angel's hat. Always wearing that angel hat. And the other guy is just some weird, like, curly-haired... He looks like, like you know, in The Simpsons when they showed Mr. Burns as a little boy with like yeah. his curly locks and that hat and a, like a big lollipop. <laughs> That's what this kid looks like. He's got like that same little curly locked hair. He looks like a rich boy. You know? He looks weird as hell throughout the whole movie. <laughs> I can't wait for one part. Yeah. Uh, coming up because I didn't even real. okay I can't wait to get to that <laughs> part while she's sunbathing her two which we learned these are apparently her cousins yeah those are their cousins because he calls okay the only name that I ever recognize these guys by is Joe Don calls them the cousins no 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 I have god what was it Ma- Max is one okay cousin Max I don't know what the angels <laughs> one was but the weird looking one's cousin Max uh, cousin Max so we got Max and Kowalski going around here. Because they call each other cousin and cousin Patsy. Yeah, okay, cousin. And Uncle Joseph is a super, <laughs> yeah, okay. super, super Mormon, super Mormon like criminal organization. <laughs> but this is weird is they come out. So Patsy's their cousin. Yeah. And when she's sunbathing, they're like getting an eyeful. Oh, well, you know. Like they're looking over Joe Don's shoulder like, uh, uh. it's like, that's your cousin. Dude, those guys are supposed to be the dumbest people in the movie. <laughs> uh, and that's when she stands up and she says, Father, if I want to go to the arcade, I will go there. And then jumps in the pool. Chris, can you do it in your voice? I can't. It's like it's like if a deaf person tried to do a Valley Girl accent. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. As a, as a uh, experiment, plug your ears for me. And try to do a Valley Girl accent and say, Father, if I want to go to the arcade, I'll go to the arcade. Plugging your ears doesn't do anything. (laughs) Just try it, though. Just try it. Daddy, I want to go to the arcade. (laughs) (laughs) That was pretty good. Daddy, if I want to go to the arcade, like, I am going to go. Okay. Thank you. That sounds like a lumpy (laughs) space princess from Adventure Time. I, but, I have not uh, have not seen that, but that's uh, oh, sounds like Patsy. It's a lower, like her voice is lower in Adventure Time. Just raise it up. And her, her voice is really high pitched. Super. And she squeaks at the end of everything. Oh. It, seriously, I, I go, Miss Pac-Man equals Patsy. I go, what the fuck is this voice? Spoiled bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she is like very spoiled because, okay, this scene ends though with her. So he says, you can't go to the arcade anymore. She says something like, okay, can I have some money? And then he gives her all this money. And then, you know, she just jumps in the pool with that. Yeah. <laughs> she put it into her run. You're like, ah, bye. <laughs> so we go back to the arcade. Dorfus is putting ketchup on a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> so, the- <laughs> so the scene starts with just a shot of ketchup going on a cookie. And he's like having a conversation with Jeff. And then he's putting, like, another cookie on top of it. And you're like, what the fuck is this guy? Is he going to eat it? <laughs> yeah, okay. But then Eugene walks up. And he says something about it. there's this van in the parking lot. And then Dorfus just hands him the uh, cookie. cookie. And he eats it. And then he doesn't say anything until Dorfus goes, do you like ketchup on your cookies? And Eugene's like, huh? <laughs> like, <laughs> That's where I put, like, Eugene. That's where I'm getting Eugene's name. I go, he's a moron, but... Dorfus is smart. 
Uh, <laughs> well, Dorfus was a valedictorian. Yeah, like Dorfus is supposed to be the smart one, but they're both retarded. <laughs> They're like immediately best friends. They're always pranking each other, you know. But Eugene gets really excited because Jeff says, Eugene, you're in charge of finding out what's going on in that parking lot with that van. And he's like, really? My first mission? And he's all excited about it. So we go out to the parking lot and we see a van that looks suspiciously like the straight arrow. And people are... (laughs) (laughs) It's rocking back and forth and sounds are coming out of it like that 8-track tape. People are clearly having sex in this van. You see, van sex. Van. My movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's rocking back and forth. You could hear like, uh, uh. like I said, like like the A-track tape in the van. That movie, if you haven't seen that movie yet, 1977's The Van was starring Stuart Goetz and Danny DeVito. It's our first episode on this <laughs> podcast. And we'll get to that later. Eugene, for some reason, climbs on top of the van. Like, so like instead of knocking on the door or anything for some reason eugene decides oh well i'll climb on the hood (laughs) and then he climbs all the way up to the top of the van and looks in the sunroof and there's a hot tub in it with a girl and a guy in there and he's and they're drinking champagne (laughs) (laughs) how did you like pause the movie when this came on because i was enjoying it so much i stopped it (laughs) It's like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> also, this hot tub in the back of this van takes up the entire back of the van. It's perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I loved it. It reminds me of that Seinfeld episode when Kramer put a hot tub in his apartment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, there's no way this would work. He's like, hey, I, I, hey <laughs> open my door for me. I can't get it. <laughs> like, what's running the hot tub? <laughs> Generators? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> So they're in the hot tub, they're drinking champagne, and Eugene looks in through the sunroof. The girl looks up. She's not even freaked out. Totally cool with it. Like, I'm telling you, everybody in this movie is in on every joke, (laughs) every setup, every punchline. The characters are in on it. They're like, oh, hey. Yeah, she she looks up at him. She goes, hey. (laughs) Like, oh, here's my friend Eugene. And then (laughs) then he freaks out. He freaks out and he falls in the tub. They're not even mad. Nobody's mad. <laughs> they just smile. And they're like, oh, another one's joining us. And then for no reason, Jeff and Dorfus just come out and open the front door to the van and look in at these naked people in the hot tub in Eugene. And they're just like, <laughs> happens all the time here. <laughs> <laughs> it just ends. No conflict. Nothing like, yep, guess we got the tub gag in. There we go. And Eugene has wet pants again. <laughs> Go back to the arcade. Uh, the two girls from the beginning show Pac-Man up. Pac-Man wipe, by the way. Uh-huh. That was a Pac-Man wipe to the arcade. <laughs> <laughs> the Pac-Man wipe. Yeah, when we say a cut, it's always a Pac-Man wipe. So the two girls from the beginning come up, and they ask Jeff about what they did to Eugene yesterday. And, okay, now this is weird. Did you notice this? Is Jeff gets really excited, and he goes... I'm dying to see that picture. I go, needs to see pic of guy in boxers. At this point, he doesn't know it's in the boxers. He (laughs) says, oh, yeah, I need to see this picture. And they're like, oh, yeah. And he's like, I need to know what my employees working with or something. I'm like, Jeff, (laughs) what What is going on? (laughs) It was super weird. He says it in a very sexual way. Well, I heard what you guys did to my new employee yesterday. (laughs) You should have been there. It was great. I would have given anything to have been there. I mean, uh, I'm just dying to see what that picture looks like. See, we uh, needed a picture of a nerd with his pants down. Come on, ladies. I just got to see what my new employee looks like caught in the act. They won't show it to him. And he says, you know about that secret game. video game I got in the back which why he has this secret video game in the back who knows just put it out on the damn floor no no we have he has to have it in his private living area of the arcade that he oh I can't wait to get to his because <laughs> that's the, that's the next scene but yeah so okay so. He's, he attaches him with this all right secret game yeah he says you guys want to play that secret game of course they do Okay, this is the part. So he says, okay, whoa, 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 okay, this is the part. So those two girls walk up. They say, what do you think we did to Eugene yesterday? And he's like, uh, <laughs> that sounds great. I got to see that picture. I got to know what my employee's working with. They say, well, no, unless, and he goes, ah, well, we can play that game in the back. And they go, okay. 
Then they give him the picture. He looks at it and laughs. And fucking Eugene's right behind them the whole time. He was right there when they were saying all this. When Jeff said that whole thing about, I got to see that picture. I got to know what he's working with. He's right there. Not even an inch from Jeff's head. (laughs) Great legs, Eugene. This is where you're finding it. Like, this is where they're defining Jeff's character and you're trying to figure out what it is. So this is that. This is the first moment I'm like, okay, what is this guy about? Because like, is he gay or what's yeah, going on here? Yeah. Ex- well, cause there, this is where be they're some starting the, very the build. Soon, yeah. yeah. And Eugene's right behind them and he's laughing about it. Like, this is all, huh, yeah, that's me and my boxers. Who cares? Yeah, Simba. <laughs> So they go and they play that special game. Also, they say something about how it's called Strip Game or something like that. Strip, I thought it was like Strip Pac-Man, but not. Sh- yeah, it was some weird something term. Strip. Strip Game. But basically, they go into the back and they play this special game, which just looks like a Pac-Man clone. Like a real bad Pac-Man clone. Oh, super clone. bad cl- ba- uh, Pac-Man clone with like these four things on there. And like they're in- playing. <laughs> again, the two girls are playing. It's not even a full machine, by the way. It looks like something that would be sitting on top of a bar, you know? Like yeah, it looks those... like the the, uh, the the little bar games that you can play for a quarter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it doesn't look like a real game at all. It's not in a regular size cabinet or anything. Best best uh, cutscenes, though, are when those girls are playing and they're making the faces. And that one, they're, they're like, like ah! she's like digging something out of her teeth while she's trying to play. <laughs> And then one of them loses. She gets all upset, and she takes off her shirt. And that's where we find out, oh, this is a strip game, and everybody's already got all their tops off. And Jeff, for some reason, doesn't play games, but he's down at his boxers with a police hat on and, like, a nightstick. Yeah, and he's like, everything that you strip, I'll take one of my pieces of clothing off. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah, he's oh, like, I don't okay. have to play. Like, I don't want to play, but you guys can play. Because they go, Jeff, how come you never play games? And he says, it's a long story. Oh, some intrigue. A little bit of a plot nugget 30 minutes in. So he tries to leave. So this is where it is. It's like, we don't really know what's going on with Jeff because he says, I don't play games. It's a long story. They're already all naked. And then he's like, all right, I got to get back to work. And then they like seduce him onto the bed. Yeah, they throw him on the bed and he's like, eh, eh, eh. but he's not having it. He's like, no, I got to get back to work. And then Eugene and Dorfus. <laughs> Eugene and Dorfus like look at each other and they go, Let's go. Like, they had this thing, this plan. Yeah, this has been all planned out. By the way, with Jeff, this this is all some elaborate This was completely (laughs) planned out. Okay. Which is so funny because it's very elaborate. And it it all relies on these girls wanting to go into the back. (laughs) Which is like... (laughs) Everybody wants a piece of Jeff. I I guess he just knew this would somehow happen because it seemed very convenient, the whole thing. So Eugene and Dorfus are uh, like get on the roof and they look down into his like uh, weird sex dungeon he has in the back of this arcade with this circular bed and his his um, secret game. <laughs> Lots of blurry shots of bodies at this point. They're they're kind of cuddling on the bed, and then for no reason, Dorfus takes this fire extinguisher and just starts squirting it down the vent. Yeah, onto them. And the fire alarm goes off for some reason, which that's not how a fire alarm works. No, but <laughs> it works for this scene. <laughs> and then for some reason, they all like panic. Jeff and the girls panic. And then he goes to the door and he's like, it's locked. We're locked in here. We're all going to die. By the way, this whole time, I th- where I'm the audience is thinking that Dorfus and Eugene are pranking these three people. Yes. Like, you don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. Because you're like, wait. Well, and the other thing is, like, okay, I thought they were just going to go spy on them with these girls, yeah, yeah, but instead they, like, ruin the whole thing. I'm like, wait, what's going on? And then eventually the door opens and the girls run out topless into the arcade into the arms of Joe Dodd Baker, who just happens to be there. <laughs> and Eugene and uh, Dorfus are back in the bar and they take a Polaroid and laughing. <laughs> Now, there was a part you missed there is when Jeff was at the door faking that it was locked. Yeah. And then he rolled onto his back and pretended to die. <laughs> and then totally like in, I don't even know what to call it, like a uh, Brady Bunch style 
camera is on his face. He opens up one eye, winks, and goes on to the next scene. <laughs> oh my god! But then they get they get this Polaroid of Joe Don Baker going like eh, with these two. He's got his <laughs> arms around. Okay, for some reason they somehow run into each of his arms, and he's got his arm around two topless girls with the Polaroid now. And then they turn around, yeah, so that they can totally see that they're topless. And then. <laughs> This just ends with him taking Patsy out of the arcade again. Go to the parking lot. He shoves Patsy into the back of his car, and we find out... This is what I said. This is when we find out these weirdos that follow Jodon around are cousins. Why were they yeah. looking at her at the pool? <laughs> and this is when I also wrote, this one guy always wears an angel hat. Never not wearing an angel hat. Which I thought this movie took place in L.A. No. It takes place in, like, what they call River City, it's weird that they could even get away with using a logo. I know. It's like, okay, is this supposed to take place in like Orange County or something? No. No, River City. Just a big Angel fan. Mm. Maybe Kowalski's just an Angel fan. He's like, I'm going to wear this on set every day. And the guy's like, I don't fucking care. <laughs> Do whatever you want, kid. Okay, Pac-Man wipe, I believe. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two guys in disguise... Well, no. So, like, when they pull out Patsy and you get introduced to this, he's, like, really... the uh, Uncle Joseph is really upset that this arcade exists and it's taking his daughter. Yeah. And that I'm, like, asking myself, is he want this arcade to be closed because of the smut of, like, the naked girls running out? Or he just doesn't want his daughter going there anymore and the easiest way is to just get it to close down? I don't, I don't know. know. I have no idea. He... It's this is like one of those ski movies from the eighties where like some weird guy wants to close down the the mountain the mountain for no reason other than he don't like them damn kids. And know? then like the two people from one hundred one Dalmatians that are sent to, to kidnap <laughs> yeah. the dogs, like But it's like in this town and they'll get into it at one point, this arcade is great. Every kid from town goes to have good, clean fun there. Yes, yeah, sure, there's the eventual, you know, topless girl here and there in the back, but I mean, harmless. Nobody's doing drugs. Nobody's murdering each other yet. Where do you want to go? <laughs> I mean, like at this point, it's just good, clean fun, and it's like keeping them out of trouble. Like they're not drinking, they're not doing anything. That I mean, I I don't even know if there's a bar in this this uh, arcade. Ah. We don't get into that. Anyways, later, these two guys pull up in a car and they're in a disguise and it took me a while to realize that these were the cousins no it took you i was like what the fuck is i thought we were introducing new characters at this point i'm like oh no i just like how bad the disguises are they're so bad Oh, they are so fucking bad But when they get out of the car it's so good (laughs) so (laughs) the kowalski's dressed like a beatnik well okay at first i thought they were both dressed like women but he had a beard (laughs) <laughs> I thought he was dressed like a bearded woman. But you're right. He's like a beatnik. And the other um, Max is dressed as a woman with like smeared lipstick on his face. All the way to, like down the down to the chin. <laughs> and they're apparently going to go scope out the arcade with some sort of plan. But they don't want to be seen. They want to like they want to. What was the? What were they doing? Nobody they, knows they were, who they are. Yeah, they were casing the joint. Is okay, what they were doing. But nobody knows yeah. who the fuck they even are. Nobody even knows them. I don't think they've ever even been in the arcade. I no, mean, they may they have been have, there when Uncle Joseph caught the two girls. But they could have just went in. Oh, absolutely. But this is just some random excuse for uh, disguise scene. And so, they which get, was super long but fast. Oh my god! So they get out of the car and King Vidiot's standing there. And he falls in love. Cannot take his eyes or hands off of uh, Max. Max. Maxine. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, he, so King Vidiot walks over and he pulls up his skirt and like looks at his ass and he's like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about or something like that. You got great legs. Not in years. But definitely Vidiot. Oh, thank you. Says something about how she has great legs, and I wrote at this point, what the fuck is going on? Yep. <laughs> so they walk in, and they, they try to blend in, but they pretty much make a fucking scene. He, almost immediately. Uh, they walk in, and another guy comes over to hit on the girl, Maxine. They try and play a machine, but then some guy doing 
a Mexican accent. Mexithog is what I put there. But he's not he's, a Mexican no. guy. He is a white guy trying to do a Mexican accent for some reason. Comes over with like a knife out and says something about this is his machine. Well, first off, he like insults like, hey, you and your ugly wife, <laughs> your ugly girl. <laughs> like He's the only person that doesn't find Mexican attractive. <laughs> And then he goes like, no, you don't get it. This is my game. Oh, I think he has the game for the rest of the day, dear. And then he pulls out a knife. Yeah. You know who I got next? And he takes it to that little dog. That's yeah. So there's it. like a, a dog that you'd see in like a low rider car. The like chihuahua with, on the. Yeah, uh, with a bobble head. Bobble head. And he, he slits its throat with his knife. <laughs> it's so weird. And all I wrote after this was, why have this scene? I don't know. What it's is, insane. There is no <laughs> point of the scene. No. I'm gonna play. No, I don't think so. See, uh, no guy with ugly chick gets to play my machine. Besides, man, it's busy. So they eventually just leave, and no. then, like that, just that whole conflict kind of just ends. They walk away. Yeah. And then the guy Kowalski trying to be a beatnik <laughs> goes like, up to the girls. <laughs> goes up to these girls playing a machine. And he's like, free love? Yeah, what the <laughs> hell is going on? Like, they're like, okay, we'll go in and scope it out. You're not scoping it out. You're making a scene. This is an 80s movie. <laughs> and he's trying to pull 60s and sixties free love and sex. He doesn't understand. He this just needs cocaine. This is so weird. <laughs> but it's so weird. And then as he's doing that and the girls run away, like, Max, Maxine runs up in his man voice and goes, Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> 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 and then they just start playing Miss Pac-Man. Hey, Arnie, look! It's a Miss Pac-Man! And she looks just like me! <laughs> Did you put anything? Yeah, I should have worn more makeup. <laughs> and then... No, this is what I wrote. I just figured out these are Patsy's cousins. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. Because they, they start to form that plan. I thought... I thought that maybe these were new characters at this point. <laughs> I was like, what is this? So they say something about taking the machines or some dumb Because shit. there's no security. Yeah, and then we see Eugene has overheard them from a room right by. They try and leave, and then Vidiot comes back and keeps grabbing Maxine as she jumps into the car. So they're, like, trying to leave, and Vidiot's, like, just not letting her go. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, climbs into that car. Then Eugene runs over. He tells Jeff about their plan and that they should call the police. And Jeff says, no, but he has a plan. Yep. And this is where I have written down 30-minute mark. Oh, my God. Are you serious? <laughs> Dead serious. Holy shit. So, well, this movie's about halfway done. <laughs> and then I wrote down, 30 minutes in, steal arca arcade games, sneak into house. <laughs> yeah, the, okay. The, the two, so, we have two plots here. Okay. Jeff's plan is the worst plan I've... I, I can't wait to get into this. This whole part that's going to happen in the next 10 minutes of this movie makes no fucking sense. Nope, not, not at all. Not at all. And it's so impractical, it's insane. So we go to nighttime in front of a house. We don't know where we are, but Eugene and Dorfus are in this car, and Dorfus says something about saving Jeff. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? Wait, what the? What the I hell was is going so on? utterly confused about what was going on. <laughs> Go back to the arcade, and the two cousins pull up in a in a big truck, and they back up into the arcade at one point, like they into hit the wall, something. and then like they might as well have just looked in the camera, and go, "Oops, did I do that?" <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote, "What the hell is Jeff's plan?" Like, this doesn't seem to be going very well. I'm telling you, this movie is all about the setup and then knocking it out of the park. <laughs> okay. Because I, I was so confused. I'm like, okay, now I have to watch to see what's going to happen. <laughs> You're right, because every scene is so elaborately... Every prank is so elaborately designed. Everything has to break right, you know? <laughs> it's just crazy. Or right, well, we're at the house again. And Eugene and Dorfus, very loudly, I'll add, just pull some ladder out from where... I don't know. They rolled up in like a goddamn coop and they <laughs> got a fucking nine foot ladder from somewhere and they're putting it on the window and not quietly, by the way, they like bang it on the side of the house and then they're climbing up and they're like arguing while they're climbing up. Then the ladder falls 
<laughs> and they're trying to climb into somebody's window. Yeah. And it, what is going on? We have no context of what is going on. <laughs> so they climb in this window very loudly, like extremely loud. The the ladder falls down and you can hear it crash and Dorfus starts screaming and Eugene starts screaming into an open window. Then they climb into this window and there's some lady sleeping. And I'm like, well, not anymore. I mean, she is a heavy sleeper. But then it gets even worse because Eugene runs over and then knocks over an alarm clock and it just starts going off. And and then he like turns it off. She's still sleeping. Then Dorfus like lays on top of her or okay. sits on top of her. Dorfus, yes, just says something like, "Oh, here, look at this lady," and then lays on top of her. I wrote, "Is he gonna rape her? What the, what the hell is going on? What is the plan?" Pass out woman rape? <laughs> question mark. What is their plan at this point? So then she grabs Eugene's belt. Like, this sleeping woman just reaches over, grabs Eugene's belt while she's sleeping, and Dorfus just all of a sudden gets up and he goes, you're finally going to get some. Stop fighting it. Yeah, he was like, oh, she's ready to go. And then she pulls Eugene into the bed, and Dorfus says, assert your manhood. Oh, it's, it's nature telling you it's time for you to get laid. No, no. Not like this, Dorfus. Come on, help me, please. Help. help you? Come on, quit fighting it, Eugene. This is bigger than one of us. Oh, oh, baby, it's been so long. Dorfus, oh. help me. Um. Come on, Eugene. Help. Assert your manhood. <laughs> This is what I wrote in my notes in all capital letters. What the fuck is the plan? What? How does this have to do with anything with these arcade machines being robbed? I don't know. He's going to fuck can, some old lady. Like, can you just imagine this, <laughs> this planning session? Okay. Those two cousins are going to show up tonight, Eugene and Dorfus. I want you guys to go to this house and rape this old woman by climbing into her window. While she is chemically comatose. <laughs> and I can just imagine Eugene being like, well, what? how is that going to stop them from stealing the machines? Eugene, it'll all come together. Trust me. God. So we go back to the arcade. The cousins have now broken in. Doesn't seem like the plan's going very well. Go back to the house. Someone is coming into the bedroom. It's Jodon. These guys are making a shitload of noise like okay so eugene's being like tossed around the bed and he's like screaming and then dorfus is just like opening doors and closing doors and like looking at things and he's just like oh shit where am i gonna go the back of a walk-in closet <laughs> that seems perfect so he hides in that closet then hides like but half of him is out he actually pulled clothes okay. off of the closet to put in front of him just to like levitate in the air <laughs> so like, he's standing in the back of a closet you're right and he's just grabbed his shirt on a hanger and just holds it in front of him but you can still see his face and you everything. can see his whole arm <laughs> And, like, Joe Don just takes off his jacket and kind of tossed it into the yeah, closet. and he turns on the light, by the way, in the closet. And he, he doesn't even look in. And then he puts his clothes away and doesn't notice. We go back to the arcade. The cousins are now stealing all the machines. And I wrote, again, what is the plan? What is the plan? They look like they're succeeding. Finally, finally, we see that Jeff is apparently going to take gas out of their truck. Yep. Why even let them get that far? As I wrote down in here, <laughs> needs a gag. <laughs> so, okay, Jeff had to know that they would somehow bring this truck, had to know that they would somehow both leave the truck to the point where he could siphon the gas out of their gas tank all the way, by the way. And let me just tell you something. The car would probably still start even if you oh, siphoned yeah. gas out of that tank. But it may not, like, go as far. Yeah, but you don't... You can't siphon the whole thing dry. No, 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 because there's fuel in the line. Exactly. So, anyways. Whatever. They go. We go back to the house. Jodon gets into bed. Three Eugene, people in a bed. <laughs> Eugene is still, like, having sex with his wife. Yeah, like, insertion is happening, or is at least... <laughs> okay, well, no, it doesn't yet. 
because oh. okay so eugene is still in his clothes okay and but he's loud and she's loud she's like oh yeah yeah and she's like rocking around the bed and joe don baker is laying right next to her and he just is like kind of getting pissed and he says something about why don't you take another pill and go to sleep <laughs> you're like you must be dreaming <laughs> And then Dorfus tries to sneak out of the room, but farts. Fart gag. <laughs> <laughs> really long and loud. And oh, then... God. <laughs> and then Jodon, you think, is going to catch him. But instead, he thinks that's his wife. This is fucking insane. Eugene is still stuck in the room. Jodon gets out of bed for some reason and still doesn't notice what's going on. Go back to the arcade. You no, know, he got out of bed because like she was moaning and she like... He, he, she wouldn't let him sleep. He's like, be quiet. He's like, oh, God. He just like, he gets out of bed. So he leaves, but he still doesn't. He never even looks. He never looks. Oh, okay. This is not a good marriage. <laughs> so we go back to the arcade. They have loaded up all of the games. Every single game in the arcade. The whole truck is full. Go back to the house. Dorfus knocks on the front door. And Jodon, for some reason, goes down and answers the door. Dorfus gives some weird speech about safety. Yeah, and like he something about like his past, and he just starts talking. <laughs> it was so weird. But Jodon entertains him like he's like, "What's wrong with you, boy?" And then he says all these things, and he's like, "Oh, is that so?" And he just he keeps going and going. Go back to the arcade. The guys try to get away, but the truck won't start. They fight over who's gonna go get the gas, but then they both leave to go get gas. And then Jeff opens the trucks and says they'll pull out the games and put them back. Yep. And I wrote, why even let him get him in the truck? Also, I guess he would somehow know that both of them were going to go get gas or something. What the? It's the worst plan I've ever heard I'm of. I'm telling you, Joe no or Jeff knows how this all works out. <laughs> This whole movie is Jeff knows how this works out. <laughs> this is a terrible plan. It seems like so much work. Yeah, but okay, so we're really early in the movie, right? We're ha- we're, we're ha- over no, halfway it's through. No, it's point. an hour and 27 minutes long. We're like 35 <laughs> okay, minutes we're, in, we're right? We're roughly halfway through this movie. And we already have like uh, a conflict. We have plot. We have two different subplots going on. We have a whole bunch of crap going on all at once. Well, to tell you the truth, this is like the whole three acts in the first 30 yeah. minutes. Like, this is the whole plan. <laughs> like, that you would think they would save for the end of it. No. No. It just happens in the whole the whole beginning. And then they have a whole bunch of fill. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we go back to your case. Okay. No, from here we go back to the house. Eugene tries to leave the bedroom, and he gets out. But then Patsy walks out of her room and sees Eugene... And then Eugene just walks back into the bedroom. <laughs> and she goes, Eugene and my mom? <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we think, like, there's going to be this setup between the two of them. We'll see no. if they follow up on that. Eugene and mommy? The guys leave with the truck, and Je- uh, with an empty truck. And Jeff and all the guys have the games, but they're in the parking lot. Yeah, they're just behind the truck. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even behind. They're on the side. Like, the guy that got in the driver's side would know that all the arcade games are out there. Yeah, exactly. They would see. And by the way, all 15 people helping Jeff with this plan. And the other thing is, if you've ever driven a truck, you know when it's empty and you know when it's full. Yep. If you just put in a ton, and, and I mean a literal ton of video games, you would tell the difference between driving it with them in it and without. But they're apparently pretty dumb. So well, the guys, Angels fans. <laughs> <laughs> so they leave this is the stupidest fucking plan i've ever heard of i put arcade is saved morons left <laughs> go back to the house dorfus is still yelling at jodon and he's still talking to him and this is where i wrote it there's way too much happening i can't keep up eugene sneaks out of a window Patsy comes down to the front door, and she, now she's looking at Dorfus yelling stuff at her dad. <laughs> and I wrote, why the hell is Joe not even talking to him anymore? It's 2 in the morning. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. Then, this is the best part. Eugene climbs down from the roof. Into the <laughs> shot. In the frame. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, something like Dorfus says something about... 
you know, I don't think you should close the arcade. We're a bunch of good people, just like Eugene. And then <laughs> Eugene comes down from his roof, from Joe Dodd's roof. That's what I'm saying. Like, they don't seem to care. <laughs> and he goes, just like Eugene, he's a good boy. And then Eugene comes down and he puts his hand around him and he's like, yeah, we're great. <laughs> And he's not suspicious at all that Eugene was on his roof. And then they looked at Patsy like, Patsy, you know these people? And they go, no. And we're like, <laughs> okay. Joe John's not suspicious at all. But then a truck pulls up in the driveway. It's the truck with the cousins. Joe Don has no idea what's going on. And he comes out to see what's going on. Then Patsy runs off with Dorfus and Eugene. The cousins open the truck and they show Joe Don an empty truck. But did you notice they kept saying something like, well, we got the receipts so you can pay us back. And he's like, what the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) Because they just made this plan on their (laughs) own. They didn't ask him or anything. (laughs) So so after listening to this, which I didn't get on the first thing is Jeff's plan that, okay, don't worry, I got a plan. He already had the whole thing set up for the cousins and taking them out of there. His plan was for Eugene and Dorfus to get Patsy the entire time. I guess. I guess instead of saying, let's save Jeff, it was, let's save Patsy? Yeah. But why would... It makes no it sense. It makes... Okay, they while they the try wrong, and steal the machines, way. you go get Patsy? For what reason? Jeff doesn't even like Patsy. Nobody does. <laughs> Nobody in the movie is like, hey, Patsy, let's go. <laughs> So, <laughs> if anything, leave Patsy alone. That's the whole reason Jodon Baker's after you. No, they want that. Stop uh, bringing her to this goddamn arcade. They need their for the announcer voice that they. Well, that's true. Yeah. So we go back to the arcade. Music is played, and there's a slumber party going on. Yeah, party plans made. PJ party. <laughs> Jeff walks up, and some girl asks him a question. You remember this? No. She goes up and she says, "Do you want to play some Pac-Man?" And she pulls up her. Nighty, and she's got Pac-Man underwear on. <laughs> Vidiot comes in. This is when I learned his name is Vidiot, by the way. I didn't even know. No, I had no idea, but I'm like, okay, that's kind of a cool name. I just wrote punk guy until this scene, and I go, I guess his name is Vidiot. Jeff tells him it's a private party, and he's got to go, and Vidiot asks him if he can play for it, and Jeff says he doesn't play, and Vidiot says, pick your best player, and then Dorfus shows up, and they're going to play Satan's Hollow. Seems like this was just a ploy to get Satan's Hollow in the movie. This game is apparently controlled by a huge joystick. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> Big ball and stick with buttons for your hands. Like, okay. It's, like Fly the Navigator. It's the size of... <laughs> yeah, like it's like Fly the Navigator or like the size of a Dance Dance Revolution <laughs> machine. The stick goes up to your waist... And you're right, it has buttons on it, and the whole thing is a big joystick on the ground and everything, which seemed kind of cool, actually. I was like, man, I wish that exists. And there's this big, like, showdown stage. And so Jeff starts the competition. It's Dorfus versus Vidiot. And then instead of playing, Dorfus just starts eating hot dogs. (laughs) But Eugene is standing next to him with a tray of them. Like, he has a tray of hot dogs and condiments. And water, or, or, or drinks. <laughs> he's holding it like he's some sort of waiter or something. Did you like how they put Vidya in lights and Dorfus in lights? Yeah, they got their the, names. Oh, so good. And Jeff keeps yelling at Dorfus to start playing the game. So Vidya's playing it, and Dorfus is just sitting there, and he's already lost two guys. So he's only got one guy left. Eventually, he finishes eating and then just beats Vidya at the game. Yep. Vidiot Patsy's wa- voice slays. <laughs> <laughs> and then Vidiot walks away defeated. And Jeff tells Dorfus, he's like, you've won. You can stop playing. And then Eugene starts giving some, like, Monologue. fucking General Patton speech where he goes <laughs> something about how you don't understand, Jeff. Dorfus play- quitting a game would be like stopping breathing for him. And then at one point, Dorfus goes... What the hell are you talking about? And then just quits. <laughs> you made my stomach hurt. <laughs> you asked Dorfus to stop it. You don't realize that for him to give up would be for him to give up on the very impulse that allows his heart to continue beating, the blood to surge through his veins, and the air to fill through his lungs. God, Eugene. You're making me sick to my stomach. But then Jeff extends the olive branch to Vidya and says, well, you can stay, but just don't cause any trouble. But for some reason, Vidya just freaks out and leaves. That was the weird thing. Okay, so they have Vidya, 
We barely know anything about his character. We know that he's like he's really good at games. Yeah, that's it. But then everybody treats him like he's a piece of shit. Well, but Jeff <laughs> tries to be nice to him. He's and like, "Oh, hey, video, you can stay. It's cool." And he's like, "Hey, fuck you, man." Yeah, but if, <laughs> if he was cool to begin with, like, "Hey, if you can be cool, just yeah, we're having a private party. Stay." Not, "Hey, go through this competition. Let's humiliate you, and then you know what? You can't stay." You're like, no, fuck you, buddy. Well, I mean, humiliate <laughs> in terms of like, okay, he lost a game. Yeah, Who he cares? Lost, he lost a game to Dorfus, his rival. To Dorfus is the best video game player in the in the whole world, apparently. He would win that fucking competition for Super Mario 3 and the Wizard. Like, I'm saying I understand why Vidi was pissed. And he goes, fuck you. <laughs> you <laughs> can't tell me that. what to do. Jeff's trying to extend the olive branch, but it seems like we need to somehow set up a villain. Because Jodon is now at the arcade again. And he's come to get Patsy's. The cousins are outside. And Jodon says he wants them to do some sort of demonstration outside the arcade the next day or something. Set up a spontaneous demonstration. Yeah. So the next day, Pac-Man wipe to the arcade. <laughs> there are about six people picketing, and a news crew is there. Instant news coverage. They interview Jodon and the cousins. Eugene, Dorfus, and Jeff come out to watch. Uh, Eugene says he thinks Jodon thinks they are running a bordello because he saw those girls without tops on. That's because Jeff's like, well, why does he care about the arcade so much? And he's like, you don't understand, Jeff. He thinks we're running a bordello in here because of those topless girls. and Which they never established why he was pissed. <laughs> but then Eugene pulls out, okay, not pictures, like slides. Yeah. Who gets their film developed like that? I don't know, people when they go to their <laughs> trip on it, to I Italy. Think, <laughs> I think Eugene was using this at home. <laughs> That's what I think. <laughs> Study I, material. I think he was throwing that in the projector or something. He shows them these slide pictures, and then Jeff looks at him and calls over the news reporter. Then we cut to, and I'm just going to, I don't care if we cut or not, Pac-Man wiped to inside. Now everybody's watching the news report. Like So the boys are all watching the news report with these girls. It's later, and the reporter, for some reason, is now at Joe Dodd's house. Yeah, doing like a... Uh like, what is going well, on? First off, they go, did you <laughs> did you organize a protest? No, I'm just a concerned parent. And yeah, then, and then, then he becomes the fucking spokesperson. <laughs> <laughs> and all through this, the cousins are doing, like, yard work, but they're always, like, trying to get on camera. It's so weird. <laughs> so the reporter asks if he's ever been to the arcade, and Jodon says no. And then she asked him about a picture with him and naked girls, and Jodon gets, like, furious about this and just stands up and says interview over and then just walks in through this sliding glass door to his own house. I have photographic evidence of you at the arcade with two semi-nude girls in your arms. What, what is this? Is this a setup or something? I mean, who do you think you are? Mike Wallace or Howard Gussell or something, huh? Are you aware of the photograph of which I speak? I have no idea of what you are talking about. Do you have that photograph with you? No. <laughs> oh, sure. Uh, but I do know where it can be found. Uh, yeah, well, this is the worst example of shoddy journalism I have ever seen. And the reporter's in the backyard, and she tries to go in, and the cousins are like, no, no, no. No. Later. Jeff is looking at a picture of a girl in his wallet. Must be a clue as to why he doesn't play anymore. Foreshadow. <laughs> Jodon walks in and asks for the picture. <laughs> Jeff says he will give it to him, but he's got to sign this agreement. Before they set it all up, it's like, you have to promise to drop the charges. But then he's like, okay, I promise. And then they go, okay, well, I'll also sign this. No. <laughs> yeah. Jodon's like, no, I won't sign that. That was a little jab at every, like, 80s businessman. Because <laughs> Jeff has it all written out. Smart move, by the way. Oh, super. But Jodon won't sign it. And he tells the cousins, well, take the folder. And so they just take this folder and they walk out. Eugene tries to karate them or something, but it doesn't work. <laughs> So, okay, to explain to me what happens. So Eugene runs up and starts trying to karate Jodon Baker. And what's he do, Chris? Jodon Baker, like, first Eugene's swinging already. Then Jodon, like, delays, puts his hand on top of him to hold him away so he can't reach him. But Eugene already wasn't reaching him. It's so weird. And then they just all walk away. <laughs> Cut through the arcade again. And Eugene yells at the picketers, that if they give their signs in, he'll give them a quarter. <laughs> so only the cousins are left outside. But they have like three signs each. <laughs> yeah. 
And then Vidiot comes into the arcade and he's screaming at Jeff because there's all these old people in the arcade and he is sold out. Vidiot is mad about old people. Big d- <laughs> And Jeff says something like, Vidiot, this is a public business. He's like, I, I don't care who wants to come in here and play video games. We want more people in here. And he's like, you're selling out. And Big Daddy wants to play. <laughs> That's what he said. So then Joe Dog comes back, of course. Vidiot walks into the parking lot, picks up a bike, <laughs> and just starts chucking it around the parking lot and kicking it. And Joe Dog, he comes over and follows him. And he says, uh, I want to make a deal with you. He says, take me to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> he says, let's make a deal. Give me a call. And hands him his business card. Okay, I love this next scene. We go to Jodon Baker's house. He's sitting in a chair reading a paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell me what happens, Chris. <laughs> he sneaks to Joseph's back back door. Like a back window. Back window. <laughs> Okay, so Jonah Baker has his back towards these windows in an easy chair. And Vidya just, like, opens the window and walks in and then scares the shit out of him. (laughs) He goes, what? I thought you wanted to talk. (laughs) And Jonah tells him, he's like, what what the hell? I told you to call me. He's like, I don't like calls. (laughs) I wanted a meeting at my office. (laughs) (laughs) And he just walks in and he goes, why did you take a seat? And then Vidya goes, I don't like seats. And he just kicks one over. This guy, man. This this whole scene is so good. And Jodan says, we have something in common. And Vidya says, you and I have something in common. Do you know what that is? We both like to hang out in public bathrooms. No. Jodan tells him, no, no, no. We both want to get rid of Jeff. And I wrote, but why would Vidya? Jeff is only nice to him and he owns the only arcade. And then Vidya while Jodon's talking, grabs a plant off his his mantle and bites it. Do you think this whole thing was like improv? Definitely. Because it's he goes off the rails in this scene. Oh yeah. He okay, while Jodon Baker's trying to explain to him a plan, he picks up a potted plant and like rips it apart with his mouth (laughs) like he's opening like a package of food and he hasn't eaten in like a week and this whole scene has this weird music playing in the back that's like this calming classical something yeah it doesn't make sense with anything (laughs) so jodon says if he can put jeff out of business he'll buy video his own game and then video gets so excited about this he literally tries to rape Jodon Baker in his chair. He, like, starts humping him and, like, grabbing at his crotch and things, and he's like, whoa, 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 calm down, son, calm down. And then he dies. (laughs) (laughs) Cut to the streets. Vidya and his Vidya girls are riding around on mini bikes. You missed it. Like, he says, like, we need a a big scene to get the ah. to get the mayor's attention at the place the right mayor's attention and he goes uh, and he's like if you do this for me I'll get your own video game cool he's like so how are you going to do this he goes wheels <laughs> and then it cuts to like this these motorcycle sounds and then like it's a long shot of like sounds and streets and it's fast moving and then that's the setup because then the gag is to reveal that they're on miniaturized bikes like tiny like mini bikes like they're they're maybe three feet long each ironically small motorcycles <laughs> is what i have written down <laughs> and then we cut into the arcade and then they ride their bikes into the arcade and then all of a sudden he just starts fighting with dorfus and jeff and then the tv reporter is there yeah but by the way not much of a scene they just ride in with the bikes, and Jeff's like, you can't ride those in here. And then they swing a couple times. The end of it. But this plot point is the mayor can shut down a business for criminals coming in and fucking the business up. Yeah, and then, you know what? It's Fuck not, you, business. It's not the business's fault. Get out of here. <laughs> so we go outside. The TV reporter is doing a report, and Joe Dodd's there again. Then video, uh, he's on the camera, so that she's interviewing him. Then video comes out in front of the camera. And right to Joe Dog says, thanks for the wheels. <laughs> and the TV reporter goes, what is that young man talking about? He goes, I, I don't know. What he's I don't saying. know. <laughs> <laughs> 
then apparently the TV reporter says the mayor is calling an emergency meeting to shut down the arcade, but why? No, the mayor may be calling an emergency meeting. Then he grabs the mic and goes, the mayor is calling an emergency <laughs> Cut to the meeting. In some sort of mock courtroom, Jodon and the cousins are on the prosecution. <laughs> this is the weirdest town hall meeting I've ever seen. And Jeff and the boys are on the uh, defense. Vidiot comes in and starts ripping down protest signs for people in the audience. And then he kicks some people out of their seats and sits down. And his, his, his little minions are following him. <laughs> but if you watch that seating scene... As they're sitting, the girls, you watch the girls, there's a black guy in the left side of the screen staring at this girl's ass the entire time. <laughs> like, straight up big smile going across. Oh, I rewatched it. I'm like, oh my. It's so good. Jonan gives a speech about closing the arcade for his opening remarks, right? Yeah. Then Jeff comes in and gives his rebuttal. The trial goes on for a while. Jodan has a nurse come on to the stand so what? wait you're not even going to talk about those flashbacks that they no no we haven't got to them yet oh okay I thought so those this were. is the part okay now we have witnesses so Jodon calls up a nurse she describes video madness and basically this is just her doing a jacking off motion at one point saying that kids just play with their joysticks all the time and people are laughing uh, she says they play with their joysticks day in and day out and there are germs they get calluses yeah, that, that's it. And she says something about arthritis, and Dorfus is like <laughs> checking his right arm like he's having a heart attack or something, or his left <laughs> arm like he's having a heart attack or something. Kids play with their joysticks day in and day out, jerking back and forth, sweating on them, and they don't even clean them off when they're through. Their joysticks are a hot bit of germs. <laughs> okay, so then all of a sudden some coach is on the stand. And he says, all my boys are spending their damn time with these video games. That's it. They know they should be with women. <laughs> is that what he <laughs> said? Video's, video's now on the stand. And he says something about how the arcade made him the man he is today. Which doesn't seem to be helping. <laughs> it was 25 words or less, you bastard. <laughs> yeah, what? what? He gets on there and says something about, can you explain to me what the arcade has done to you and he says Vidiot comes up with something and says 25 words or less and to me that was him he was there's some scene out there on the on the on the floor where he was prepped on what to <laughs> what to give his testimony on <laughs> yeah he says something about how the arcade made him the man he is today which all the people for Jeff's side cheer about that mm -hmm. but then we get another Pac-Man transition. And then Jodon tells everybody about the filth in the place. And then we cut to the first of the fantasy scenes. Yeah. Fa okay. Not flashback. It was fantasy. And in this fantasy scene, the girls from the beginning are wearing some sort of weird, like topless corset type deal with whips while there's these other girls mud wrestling and Patsy's playing a, with a giant joystick. Girls are waiting in line to have sex with Eugene. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, what is going on? And Jeff is laughing like some sort of Satan character. And then everything goes up in flames. Because it's uh, the Satan's den. And then cut to the of coach Satan. and the nurse are hugging each other. Like, it's fantasizing about yeah. it. <laughs> it's so, it's such a weird. So weird. Like I so, said, like so okay. So, do you think that every writer had a had a part in each scene, or do you think they actually wrote like this person wrote the first thirty minutes, this one wrote the second? I have no and idea. This one wrote the last because that's so how it's weird. broken out. And another thing, so this was in our My Tutor episode. If, was there a point in the eighties that mud wrestling was like a thing or something? I thought to me, I got exposed to mud wrestling was uh, married with children. Because that's uh, yeah, all they I ever brought thought it up. that was like a joke. It was a joke. Like, there's no such thing as this or something. No, the, it exists. Well, I'm sure it exists, but it's like, it's just so odd. I, I Mud wrestling. I've never seen it. <laughs> Somebody tell us if that's a real thing. I mean, I know it's a real thing, but... But I mean, like, if, no, if like, I wanted to go down to downtown LA on a Friday night and watch some girls go and get wrestle. in some mud... <laughs> get in some mud. And fight... To the death, can I do that? 
I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it exists the like because they, they have the, the Jello wrestling and stuff like that. I'm like, I've never, I've never even heard of any of this. I think this is a thing from movies. Because I mean, you lived in a college town for a little bit. There was nothing like I've that. I've never heard of anything at my life. I think this is just a device in movies. Cause, yeah, I'm like, I, I was in slow for a long time, and I never you saw... You lived in Chatsworth for yeah, the, most of your uh, childhood yeah, during the, porn the 80s cap, the porn and the 90s. The world. Did you ever see, like, mud wrestling clubs or anything? No. See, I don't think this is a real thing. I think this is just something they made up for movies at some point. Or we just aren't fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that, too. <laughs> Uh, so it's Jeff's turn to present his argument, and then we go to another fantasy world where he's holding an infant and <laughs> teaching a math class. He is he is <laughs> nurturing the youth. So he's teaching everybody like the Pythagorean theorem or some <laughs> shit on a chalkboard, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's dressed in like weird cult robes. And then we pan over to see Eugene with that little soda jerk hat on, serving milk. And he says something about, like, milk does a body good. And uh, this is what I like to give the children who come to this arcade. And then we cut over to Dorfus, <laughs> dressed up in philosophical garb, talking to another philosopher. Then Dorfus farts. And the philosopher says something. Wait, he wasn't talking to a philosopher, was he? He was talking to the Pope. There was a Pope? Oh that my was god, the I didn't pope. even notice that. I didn't even notice it was the Pope. I, I thought it was supposed to be like Plato or something. No, I swear I think it was the Pope. <laughs> so Thormus is talking to the Pope and farts. <laughs> and the Pope says something like, uh, do you smell that? And Thormus says something about he who smelt it dealt it. It is it is it <laughs> the Pope says yeah or something. The, those two fantasies are so weird. Like <laughs> so if, weird. if you walk into the movie at that point. I would be so confused. You'd be like, what the fuck? Okay, <laughs> so Jeff calls Patsy to the stand. That's his surprise witness. She comes up. She says good things about the arcade and that it's the only place to go for good, clean fun. It's like the only place to go for good, clean fun. That was a good one. There you go. Uh, Joe Don then has a panic attack in the middle of this and just starts screaming. <laughs> Uh, Dorfus runs up to the front during this with a projection screen, and they just put up the picture of him with the topless girls. <laughs> <laughs> they could have just done this to begin with. Uh, Jodon is livid. Uh, he starts going around just screaming. The mayor and his council deliberate. They say that no laws have been broken, and they can't recommend closing it. Jodon walks over. Okay, I love this part. Jodon walks over and congratulates Jeff on the win. But then he goes something about how, uh, oh, well, you've won for now. And Jeff's like, well, it's over. And he goes, well, we found this in your kitchen. <laughs> and he just apparently was holding a dead rat, like a giant dead rat. A like, New York-sized like, York rat. Jodon Baker had this in his uh, blazer or something. <laughs> The whole time. <laughs> like He pulls it out. And it's like, well, why didn't you present that during the case? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Eugene says they should settle this like gentlemen and that they should play a game to decide. Or he could just be like, fuck you, we won, go home, the arcade's staying open, we're not breaking any laws. But no, they put themselves in a vulnerable position. Jeff says it's his man against anyone that Jodon <laughs> chooses. He chooses Vidiot, of course, and Dorfus is John's pick, or Jeff's pick. So we're going to have the exact same matchup we just had where Vidiot got his ass kicked by Dorfus, and they're going to play a game called Super Pack. Jodon asks the cousins then if they know where that slob kid lives. Dun, and, dun, dun. Yeah, but now we're getting like, he's the opposite of Jeff's because on Jeff, like, we never know what the plan's going to be. Now we know exactly what the plan's going to be. Yeah, and by the way, <laughs> Jeff's still standing there. And, like, Jodon looks at his cousin and he goes, Do you know where that slob kid lives? <laughs> That's the whole movie, though. Everybody says stuff in front of the other person. And the other person just doesn't hear it. Yeah, or doesn't just, see it. They just don't see it. So we go to the arcade. Jodon shows up and asks where Dorfus is. But he isn't there. Eugene says, The guy at the hot dog stand next to his house hasn't seen him since last night. Jodon says Jeff should play, but then we get into the whole thing about how he never plays. He takes, then Jeff and Eugene go to the side, and Jeff tells him, he goes, I never play games because they make me ill. And Eugene asks him why, and Jeff tells him the whole story. Finally get the backstory. And Jeff, I go, 20 minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jeff says, well, here you got your uh, second act twist, you know. <laughs> Dorfus is now kidnapped, and Jeff has to clue us in on This is an hour and seven minutes in. <laughs> <laughs> he says, at one point he was really good, and then six months ago, after they opened the arcade, his girlfriend and him were having sex in the back room, and we flash back to it. Lots of candles on on machines. This is so good. Is there's lit candles all over the place, and like arcade machines, and this this circular bed, and they're just getting hot and heavy in the the back room, which I guess Jeff lives there. We see a sex scene. Then he says, "But at one point, in the reflection of one of the machines, I could see her father, and then her dad shows up and starts beating her." Beating her. Like, like we're not kidding. <laughs> beating. <laughs> Did like, you have hear the song that was playing during that? No. Oh, love love is a moment lost in the ocean. <laughs> love is a moment like a wave lost in the ocean. While he Come. while he literally Cups his hand and belts his daughter across the face multiple times. I think he had a close fist. I swear. He was like seriously beating her. I just like this story because it's going bam, 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 bam. Like, lost my virginity. This weird song playing in the back. And then her father comes in and beats her. And then immediately, then they move out of town. They moved out of town <laughs> and he hasn't seen her since. And every time he looks into the screen of a game, he sees the reflection of her father. And it makes him sick. Q montage. Yeah. Eugene <laughs> says, I'm going to help. Yeah. Okay. By the way, Jonah Baker says, you have 15 minutes before all this happens. They've gone in the back room and this story seems like it's taken 15 minutes, but we have a full trading montage where Jeff works out while Eugene reads to him from a game magazine. This is what I wrote. I thought they only had 15 minutes. <laughs> He tries to get him to play, play a game, but then he passes out in the middle of it. He's like, uh, uh, and <laughs> kind of falls on the bed. <laughs> and he gives him smelling salts. And he gets him back up. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He tries to get him to play like a handheld the Pac-Man The little pac <laughs> that my grandma had, yeah. <laughs> and he passes out, and then he uses smelling salts. He gets him to play a game finally. And Jeff's like, I'm doing it, Eugene. I'm doing it. Go to the match. Jeffs comes out with the towel around his neck. He's a little sweaty, but he's ready to go. Looking like fucking Rocky at this point. Patsy comes out, and she starts the match between Vidya and Jeff. That fucking voice. <laughs> okay, if everyone would, like, just bag the noise, okay, like we could do this. Okay, players on their marks. Get set. Start. Game! They play some, and I wrote at this point, fake Pac-Man game. I had never seen that Pac-Man okay. game. Super Pac is a real game, believe it or not. I found this out. It's an actual real game, and people online uh, on these message boards on IMDb and stuff were talking about it because somebody was like, what the hell is that weird-looking Pac-Man game? And, so, and people were like, oh, I remember that game in the 80s. It was great. <laughs> so it was real, but apparently it has not made it onto anything recently. It doesn't look like it makes any sense. No, like just you have to get keys of, to get the pellets. To and, get, like, there's fruits instead of pellets or something? Like, what the well, there's hell? There's always fruit, but, I mean, they're just bonuses. But then, like, the Pac-Man avatar gets bigger. I could like, not this, understand just, it. Like, if you're looking at it from an 80s, 83, this game's, like, super complex that they're showing. Yeah, the, because there's also parts where the Pac-Man's running through ghosts. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell is this? But, that, I mean, we don't even get that for at least another five minutes. Because they have this other subplot that started. Okay, well, we'll get to that. So they, they start playing Super Pack, and then Jeff's sucking because he keeps thinking about her ex and her dad, and he asks Eugene, you got to find Dorfus. Cut to Jodon's house. The cousins have tied Dorfus up with a cloth in his mouth. It's a cloth. I thought at first that they just shoved bacon into his mouth because <laughs> <laughs> it looked like, like strips of bacon were coming out. Yeah, yeah. But then for no reason, the cousins go, we should go check on the arcade. And then they just leave. They're like, where's he going to go? <laughs> so then they leave. And then Dorfus just starts farting really loud. And his Jodod's wife wakes up. Because all she does is sleep in this movie. She wakes up and runs downstairs when she hears that fart. 
And she's all excited and like climbs on top of Dorfus and tries to sex him up. With his hands tied. And I was like, I feel so bad for this lady. This is the filthiest man I've ever seen. And she has to like touch him. <sighs> Go back to the match. Vidiot is winning. The mayor shows up. <laughs> so now we have three final plots going on yeah. at once. <laughs> so the mayor shows up for no reason. And Jeff tells Eugene to go talk to him and schmooze him up. Eugene talks to him for a while and then convinces him to like play a video game. And he's just like, I don't know how to play one of these games. What, what is this? And he's like, no, 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 you'll like it. And he puts it that quarter and like his first guy dies. He's like, oh, well, I don't understand this. He's like, well, why don't you grab the fucking controller and start moving it? Then the mayor starts really enjoying it. Go back to the house. Dorfus convinces Jodan's wife to untie him. Go to the match. Still going on. The mayor is enjoying the games. The cousins come in. Jeff's losing. Vidiot quits. So, like, Jeff's losing so bad that Jodon tells Vidiot, he goes, well, you might as well quit, Vidiot. Don't embarrass him anymore. <laughs> and he just walks away from the game. But then Dorfus shows up. I, I, then- I put Dorf fuck the wife. Obviously. <laughs> And then he showed up. <laughs> so he has sex with Jodan's wife. Shows up. <laughs> I think the main song started to play. Yes, the video game song starts playing. Because play Dorfus is joystick. here. <laughs> Dorfus is here to the rescue. He's going up to play, but then Eugene stops him. And he says, no, Dorfus. You have to let Jeff do this himself so he can beat his past demons. And I'm like, no, the arcade's on the line. Not only is the arcade on the line, he if he loses, doesn't he like he can't open another one? Yeah, they have to close it and everything. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let Dorfus go in there and play that game. But this, it was the dumbest thing ever. Like, so original stakes were he he closes the arcade down, then he can just go reopen it somewhere else. Yeah, in the same city, which they obviously would. Would or I can now make a bet that I'll never open, it never again. open one again, but I won't gain anything if I lose, like win. What do I win? You'll leave me alone? What if I win it the other way? Oh, you'll leave me alone? I still don't think Jonah's going to leave him alone. I don't think so either. You get him to sign. <laughs> Maybe if he said you got to sign this paper. <laughs> but anyways, uh, somehow everybody convinces themselves that Jeff should play it. And then all of a sudden he goes, oh, you're right. And then he just plays well and wins. Yep. And we do it to the video game song. They won. Uh, Vidiot, for some reason, never comes back and finishes this game. Uh, Jodog gets mad, and he starts yelling at the mayor. And he tells him... The mayor tells Jodog to blow it out his ass and give him a token. <laughs> uh, Jeff wins. The arcade is saved. Jodog beats up the cousins. <laughs> uh, and then, for no reason, Jeff's grandpa rolls up in no, a wheelchair. <laughs> I think you missed the other part. Okay, well, Before the grandpa... Pats, they go. They give Patsy a full-on frame, and she gives social commentary about how video games are cool or something. <laughs> There's like a whole message that she gives. Then the granddad comes in. <laughs> okay, so the grandpa, who just looks like Hugh Hefner in a wheelchair, <laughs> or no, you know, it's like Larry Flint. Yeah. <laughs> so Larry Flint fucking rolls in with his nurse and. <laughs> This is such a dumb way this to is the end. the fucking worst ending to a movie I've ever seen. Is this grandpa rolls in, looking like Larry Flint. He's got like a shawl over his shoulders, some weird shit, and this like candy striped nurse. And he walks in and he goes, Grandpa! <laughs> and he goes, Jeffrey, the arcade looks like it's doing great. I've been out of town looking for somebody. <laughs> <laughs> and then all of a sudden Jeff's ex-girlfriend's there He's like, I got her ah. He's like, look at I've been looking everywhere for her, Jeff For you And she looked a lot better in his backstory Than <laughs> she does in this live You think video. it's the same girl? <laughs> I don't know, man That girl was She just walks in and she's like, huh? <laughs> Looks like somebody just brought her out of a trunk <laughs> Just walking on the sidewalk like three seconds before this. Hey, you, come here. <laughs> He's like, I think that's his girlfriend. Maybe not. So they reunite. Sandy and Jeff, they hug. What the fuck is going on? All of this happened way too quick. 
But then all of a sudden, Dorfy Dorf says is- something like, I think Eugene likes your nurse or yeah. something. He, whatever Dorfus says, he's like, Eugene and the nurse need to get it on. Yeah, and then and then the grandpa okay. goes, "No, that's mine." And then like creepily touches this. Oh my leg. god! <laughs> like she's wearing stockings or something, and he like puts his finger in it and all this. It's this like, is all oh mine. My god! The grandpa goes, "I think that this boy has a special type of problem." And Dorfus goes, "What's that?" And he goes, "Well, isn't it obvious?" Someone needs to get this boy laid. But he like turns into the camera, <laughs> takes off the shawl, and screams it with like his his fake teeth popping out. <laughs> like when I say shawl, it's like he's a fucking Jewish rabbi or something. Like he's got like like you're in a bar mitzvah and they're <laughs> they're wearing that thing. Eugene's got a, a special kind of problem. Well hell, that's obvious. Somebody gotta get this boy laid. It was like a very Roddy, Roddy Dangerfield, like uh, back to school, like everybody gets laid. Yeah, it's just that. <laughs> but this old man in a okay. wheelchair. He goes, "That's obvious. Someone needs to get this boy laid." And then it cuts to Eugene's face, and then cuts to Patsy. <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, well, now we've set it up. Patsy and Eugene are finally going to get together. We see a shot of Patsy." No. No, nobody fucks no. Patsy. We'll in this never movie. see Patsy again, but she's the last shot. And then it goes to a motel. Motel with our three favorite guys. The boys. Here, here, <laughs> here come, come the, the boys. boys. <laughs> Jeff and Dorfus take Eugene up to a hotel room. He is dressed like he's in fucking Miami Vice or something with like a Hawaiian shirt and slick back hair and like a toothpick in his ear. And they they knock on this door. And they open it up, and Eugene walks in, and there's some dominatrix on the bed, and it's Joe Dodd's wife. <laughs> Mrs. Rudder? <laughs> then he says, Mrs. Rudder, meet Simba. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Cut back to outside with Dorf and Jeff walking. He's like, what do you want to do now? He goes, play video games. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> totally awesome video games. <laughs> Oh my god. Mrs. Rudder. Um, I'm Eugene Groby. <clears throat> and, um, I'd like you to meet Simba. Oh, get him. Oh, what do you want to do? <laughs> Recommendation? Okay, this movie is an hour and a half long. It'll take you 45 minutes to watch it because it just goes so fast. It's, I. <laughs> Usually when I do these movies, I have to maybe watch them in two parts because I write notes for a lot of it so I can tell what's going on the whole time. I watched this all the way through. I just couldn't stop. It was so... There's so much shit happening that, like, for one, how do you even pause it? It's just too much. You just have to rewatch it. There's no pause. You you back it up 45 seconds and rewatch. You're <laughs> what you just missed. You're right, though, is that like it's the fastest 80 something minutes of my life. It went by so quick. There's never a point where it even allows you to get bored. No, there's always something. There's always a joke. There's always a setup. There's always a you trying to figure out what's going to happen next. This is, I would say, like the perfect uh, cut for like a teen sex comedy from the 80s is just like, don't let it slow down. No, but I think it's. It's so your other uh, movies were made for drive in to make out and all that kind of stuff. This movie's the exact opposite of that. This will keep everybody watching and then looking at each other like, D- Did you see what I just saw? Because that's retarded. <laughs> and you won't get that time to make out. You'll be like, I have to see this. Yeah, I mean, so which this is, was definitely for the theaters, right? Yeah, it had to be. And I would imagine people would be laughing because it was a funny movie. Like, the, the jokes were legit funny. Like, I wasn't laughing at how bad the movie was. I was laughing at the jokes because they were really good. The only bad thing about this movie, besides, like, that one character, Patsy, was the writing and the plot. Everything else, there's no boom. There's no, like, the, the, the swipes are 80 swipes. Yeah. The... But you know what I would say about the writing and the plot is like this movie knows what it is. Yeah, it's it just knew the supposed, entire time. It's supposed to be fun. Everybody in the movie is so damn aware of the movie that they're making that they're all just having a good time. Jordan Baker knew exactly what movie he's being in. He didn't. He, you know, he hammed it up in the perfect way possible. He just plays the, a great villain. 
everybody else just looks like they're having a blast. I, I think if more comedies were like this, we it would be better because this is just funny. Like, I don't. Sometimes they get too much into bullshit and stories and everything. It's like just let's just have some fun for an hour and a half and laugh. This is like if Ocean's Eleven with the Brad Pitt crew, so the new one, met a Seth Rogen film. <laughs> You know what it's kind of like is uh, this is the end. Yeah. Whereas like it was just they had fun. It was self-aware. It was just straight up hour and a half of fun and jokes. Like that was it. That doesn't need to be anything else. Like I, I know that, you know, like new Will Ferrell movies, like they just try too hard to add these stupid storylines in it that nobody could give a shit about. This movie is what, 33 years old? And it still kind of holds up. I think it's, it holds up great. I mean, I well, I mean, we grew up in the '80s. I mean, this movie was made a year before I was born. But right. It's still. I mean, I I always grew. I grew up playing in arcades. I played and in stuff. arcade games too, or arcades. I don't know. It's. I think it holds up rather well. It's still the same like stigma against video game players. It's just they just had that one punk character that they were messing around with. I don't understand, like. Punk had been around for already six years. They were still considered weirdos and schizophrenics. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to spend $30 and get it on Blu-ray and you enjoy these type of movies, you will not be disappointed. I think if you buy the DVD or the, the Blu-ray, you have to start showing it to other people because every time you sit down and watch with somebody else, you're going to see something you missed the first time. Yeah, because there's so much there's going so on. There's so much. I, there, I have to rewatch this film. I got worried because when I sent you all the movies that we were going to do this one had like the lowest reviews on imdb and the most reviews like there was over a thousand users that had reviewed this movie and it has like a four out of ten and i was like i mean i'd seen this movie a long time ago when i was in college and i didn't really remember it much and i was like i don't i mean i don't remember it being that bad but i've only heard negative things about it and i was like okay well i mean we're gonna give it a shot it was great what the hell were these people expecting? They were expecting that other one, the uh, the wizard. I guess this movie's better than the wizard. I didn't. I don't. I didn't cry in this movie. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! How do you not cry when they run into the dinosaurs? Uh, spoilers on the wizard here, but <laughs> when you run into the dinosaurs in Cabazon, you know, oh, that is my little. Oh god! Come on, I'm starting right now. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you cried at the uh, Super Mario 3 competition. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, if you ever cover The Wizard, I got questions. I think we should at some point. <laughs> uh, the Wizard is so great. I I thought this movie was great. I have no complaints about it. No, this was actually the worst movie to pick. Because I enjoyed it. it. Yeah. Well, you enjoyed Dolomite. Yeah, but this one, I can watch. I sit down and watch it once. And I got a lot of it. Dolomite, you had to rewatch. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about this movie is that you can't make fun of how it was made. Nope. If the jokes were bad, the movie would suck. But the jokes were fun. Patsy's voice was annoying, but she even kind of grows on you by the end of the movie, and you expect her to get with Eugene, and that never happens. So <laughs> they planted a relationship that never blossomed. But Eugene did get laid eventually. Oh, boy. By her mom. Oh, my God. Oh, man, that's even weirder. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> oh, my God. By her married mom, Eugene oh. got the upper hand of <laughs> You think you went up to Patsy later and said, who's your daddy? <laughs> <laughs> I've been where you've been. <laughs> oh, my God. Chris, you hear that horn? Oh, God. <laughs> uh oh I I want to hear. I did the one last time. You gotta do your song. You hear the dulcet tones of Sammy Johns ringing through the air. Yes, yes, I do. You see that light shorting out? They're coming in hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's obvious. That straight arrow was obviously parked out outside that arcade plenty of nights, and I think that. Well, at first, I think. Maybe one day Bobby went to work And DeVito was like Bobby Have you heard about this new arcade That opened up in the parking lot Across the street And Bobby's like What? And he tells him He's like Bobby There's girls in there 
there's lots of them. All the girls from your school, they're hanging out over there. And he goes, oh, that's interesting. Nobody ever invited me over. He'd be like, why would they, Bobby? <laughs> and he goes, Bobby, I got a plan. Now, I've said this before, but it is true. You, I mean, it's a close call, but you are slightly better looking than me. <laughs> so the plan is, I'll get on the waterbed in the back of that van. And Bobby, you go inside that arcade and lure those girls out with the promise of a joint. And then when they get to the back, I got the rag with the chloroform on it. We'll knock them out, have our way. When they wake up, we just say something. They, they, they got all packed out. Send them back in. Put a, give them a few tokens. Ease their mind. <laughs> It'll work great, Bobby. He says a sack of tokens back there on the waterbed. <laughs> and you see like change jiggling. But as we know, nothing ever works out well for these boys. <laughs> so Bobby goes in to lure a girl back to the van. Perfect. And he sees Maxine. <laughs> And he goes, hey, you want to come out? Hey, you like vans? <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, mine's out in the parking lot. You want to go share a joint in the back? Okay. <laughs> he brings out Maxine and uh-oh, the waterbed pops. Tokens are everywhere. <laughs> DeVito and Bobby slide out of that back of the van like like Jeannie does in the... <laughs> the cheerleaders on that waterbed pop and these boys can't get it done (laughs) oh all right what would you think no i i didn't want to go with the obvious route of having a van at at the arcade oh okay here we go i wanted them to be (laughs) the secondary like there's a, a secondary movie to this and they're the movers that come and steal the arcade machines. <laughs> like the cousins hire them? Yeah. <laughs> and so they got one tall some... one, the little one. <laughs> so you think Tobito would be like, Bobby, we're going to steal all these arcade machines and start up our own arcade because that's all where the girls are being. They all want to go to the arcade, Bobby. He only really wants one arcade machine. <laughs> and he, he goes, wants the strip <laughs> the strip video game. Okay. Bobby, there's one machine in there that I heard can get girls to take the tops off. And that's the one that gets installed I feel in the like... straight arrow. <laughs> he puts it in the back of the straight arrow and asks girls if they want to play strip games. Yep. Oh my god. He you has his what? own tokens with like one's his face. <laughs> like one side is his face and the other side is his penis. <laughs> Do you know what else I was imagining? Is that uh, DeVito and Bobby would somehow try to make a glory hole out of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> the joystick. <laughs> so they steal the machine and then take, remove the joystick. <laughs> and DeVito just paints it like a joystick and sticks it out of the machine. Oh, God. And then some girl comes up and plays it too hard. <laughs> No, Eugene comes with chemicals to clean it. (laughs) (laughs) He gets all the paint off. (laughs) Oh, God. All right. Well, (laughs) thanks again for joining us on this episode of The Grind Bid. Hughes, thank you so much. That was fun. For filling in for man. You got to come back. Uh, Once man gets here, we got things to do. I know you got to be on some more episodes. I got to make you watch a movie you don't like. Yeah, because <laughs> if you you've never now the audience doesn't know Hughes, but I've known Hughes for a long time, and when he hates a movie, he hates a movie. There's one that we got in a fight over. <laughs> yeah, he he uh, would not even let me watch it without <laughs> without getting really upset about it, uh, and then we both got an argument. <laughs> Your movie still sucks, huh? It wasn't very good, but. You were acting like it was a fucking. <laughs> I'm Citizen trying to Kane. watch this goddamn movie, and he's just like, "Fuck this!" <laughs> so I would have to pay him back somehow. Uh, apparently, he's a big fan of Dangerous Men, so I, I want to do a Crown film. I haven't done one of those. Ah, well, next time we'll have you back for a Crown film. I got plenty more. I gave you an option to do a Crown film for yeah, this. Yeah, but one. that one looked. Uh, oh, Weekend Pass. 
Yeah, that or one. jocks. By the way, do you know who stars in Weekend Pass? No, Phil Hartman. Oh, really? Yeah, <laughs> one of his first movies. Uh, and also, Jocks has Richard Roundtree and uh, the Mariska guy who plays uh, Mariska Hargitay, uh, a bunch of other people, and the guy who plays Ogre in Revenge of the Nerds. Yep. It's also, I think his best role is as Jackson in Bloodsport, if you've ever seen that movie. <laughs> That's the reason I didn't pick that one. It's because like I recognized immediately from the trailer like four people. Yeah, like, no, don't want to watch. Have this. you ever seen Bloodsport? Oh yeah, I love it how uh, Van Dam is in that competition and uh, he has this big fat American guy that's his friend immediately. <laughs> Uh, what the fuck kind of fighting style does Jackson know other than just bear hug? That, <laughs> that's all you need to know. <laughs> all right. All right, let's do this. Let's finish. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us. If you want to find us, grindhousefilm.com, twitter.com slash grindpod. We're on Facebook, Instagram, uh, wherever social media platforms are found. Hughes, where can everybody find you? You can find me at Iodine Live on Twitter, and I uh, do an extra live stream for Obsidian Entertainment on twitch.tv slash obsidian. All right. Thanks for joining us. Bobby, get the tokens. Hey, Bobby, I got the money.